Jack Mildred established the image of the running quarterback at Oklahoma, leading a legacy for the likes of Steve Davis and later on, Jamel Holloway. But the Sooners had golden arms as well. Bobby Warmack. And for a short time, Troy Aikman. Here connecting with All-American Keith Jackson. Kale Gundy had a great run in the early 90s and remains the Sooners' all-time passing leader. Now the reins have been handed to Josh Heupel, who in his first start set two passing records and tied another. We'll see what the South Dakota native can do next against the Baylor Bears. trying to turn things around with new head coaches and last week Oklahoma was a static day big 49 nothing win over Indiana State the Baylor Bears with one of the most improbable losses in recent memory last week they were devastated Drew it's unbelievable since 1971 that was the last time in college football history defeat was snatched from the jaws of victory like what happened last week Baylor first and goal inside the 10 yard line eight seconds to go in the game they have a three point lead all they have to do is genuflect take a knee no they try to score more points and tragedy strikes. Darrell Bush close to the end zone, coughs it up. Kevin Thomas, a yard deep, scoops it up. He goes untouched 101 yards, and UNLV shocks Baylor and wins the football game when they thought they lost. Now for Kevin Steele. How does he get this team prepared to play? Well, like all athletes, what you have to do is put adversity behind you and move on. Show some resiliency. If you get knocked out, get back up off the ground. And the player that has to do it most is Bush. He had a great football game. He rushed for over 120 yards, put his team in position to win the game for the most part, except for that tragic last play. He has to have selective amnesia. Well, for the University of Oklahoma, it's been 11 years since Barry Switzer departed, and really Oklahoma Sooner dominance departed. They have their fourth new head coach in Bob Stoops. He has a great pedigree, and Bob Stoops has brought a new attitude. Well, he really did. With Barry Switzer, they ran the option. Bob Stoops, a change of philosophy, spread the field, throw the football to set up the run, and he's got a kid that can really get that done. Heupel, look at his numbers last week. He set a school record completions, set a school record with touchdowns, five in a single game. Also, he tied a school record, 341 yards passing, all in the first week. And in this West Coast offense, timing and tempo is key. He has a decent enough arm, not real, real strong, though, but what he has is a quick mind. And that's imperative in this, knowing when, where, and how to throw the football. And this kid can do all of that. He's very talented making his reads. Well, it's kind of strange to see the Oklahoma Sooners throwing it all over the football field. That is exactly what they'll try to do today against a very good Baylor Bear yeah. defense. And it is the conference opener for the Baylor Bears and the Oklahoma Sooners. Gary Baxter, one of the finest cover men in college football, he'll be tested today by Jarrell Jackson and the Oklahoma Oklahoma Sooner passing attack. Come on back to Norman with us. Big 12 football is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. By eFollett.com. Need college textbooks? Get out of line. By Sonic, America's drive-in. By Southwestern Bell Wireless. Southwestern Bell, friendly neighborhood global. And by your local BMW centers, the ultimate driving machine. We're on campus at the University of Oklahoma in Norman. And it's time to check in with the third member of our crew, Jim Knox. Jim? Thanks, Drew. Just checking out the scene on top of the Sooner Schooner. Not bad. And the Roughneck Queen. She's having fun, too. Everybody pumped up for today's game. Got to tell you about the Southwestern Bell Wireless Big 12 Player of the Week, according to the fans. Boomer and Sooner have to be pleased about this because it is Josh Heifel, the Oklahoma Sooner quarterback, last week tossed for 341 yards along with five touchdowns against Indiana State. That is a school record. Josh Heifel, your Southwestern Bell Wireless Big 12 Player of the Week. Now, if you fans have a chance to vote for it, all you have to do is log on to Big12Sports.com each time you Boat, you score some big-time prizes. But time for us to ride out of here because up next, it's the Dr. Pepper Big 
12 game of the week, Oklahoma against Baylor. More than 74,000, a sellout at Memorial Stadium in Norman, Oklahoma. Only the fifth sellout since Barry Switzer departed in 1988. And back-to-back -back weekends of sellout football at Owen Field. Glad you're along on our Dr. Pepper Big 12 Game of the Week. Oklahoma won the toss, and they've elected to defer to the second half. Tim Duncan will kick it deep to the Baylor Bears. Elijah Birkins, Martin Dossett back deep. Birkins closest to you. They'd like to see one of those two handle the football in the direction of Dossett. He's a sprinter on the track team. And he'll get it to the 25-yard line. That's where Baylor will put it in business. Their quarterback is Jermaine Alfred. He's a senior from Baytown, Texas. He's been very accurate this year. 25 of 40, no picks, three touchdowns. Up front, a young developing offensive line. Joe Jackson started some a year ago. He's been solid through the first two ball games. When they throw it, they want to get it in the hands of Andre Fuller. They think he's a game-breaker. to Daryl Bush. And Bush still going across the 40 to the 43-yard line. Good start for the Bears. One of the key blocks, Lagway. Let's take a look at the big fullback. They set him in an offset position. Here's Lagway, and he's in, he started to the left side, went in motion, motion back the other way, got the cap, cut block on Callens, and then an unbelievable seam occurs on the back side. Bush with good vision, cuts it back. Big, big play on first down. He got 19. Bush does well to make a positive out of what looked like a negative. He got a yard. Defensively, an even front for Oklahoma. Corey Callens, the junior right end, is a player. At the linebacker level, Rocky Kalmus, a tall, rangy guy, 6'3". He's a sophomore from Jinx, Oklahoma. They like him a lot. Two good cover corners in Pee Wee Woods and Mike Woods. No relation. Mike Woods is a three-year starter. Starting lineups brought to you by Southwestern Bell Wireless. And Bush gobbled up in the backfield. Nowhere to run. Cornelius Burton arrived the same time he got the football. Cornelius Burton comes in unblocked. He's on the back side. It's a counter from behind, from the right guard and right tackle are pulling. Nobody picks up Burton from the back side. He just follows the tackle inside, untouched, and makes the play in the backfield. What Baylor's offensive coaches have to realize, though, is I may be able to run a reverse on Burton. He didn't stay at home. He chased my lineman and made a tackle for loss in the backfield a little nosy. Now it's third down and 13. They need the 46 of Oklahoma. This is complete. Andre Fuller, but he won't get anywhere near midfield or beyond. Rocky Kalmus, 20, was in the neighborhood. Also number two, Mike Woods, and Baylor will have to punt the football. Real sure tackling by Oklahoma. The catch was made. That's fine. Well short of the first down marker, so just keep everything in front of you. And a sure tackle. Kyle Atterbury is the punter and also place kicker for Baylor. Jarrell Jackson back at his own 20. You got movement, the left guard on the punt team. Uh, way, way early. It looked like it was Whitson. Uh, lurch backwards before the snap of the football. Ball start, offense. Five yard penalty. Within fourth down. Just like an offensive lineman, you can't move before the snap of the football. Rocking backwards prematurely. No go. No can do. Once you get in a two-point stance, you cannot start the play of the football, uh, the play before the snap of the football. You have to be like a statue up there in that two-point stance. Dave, I believe that's their first pre-snap penalty of the year. Yes, it is. They had seven penalties coming in today, Drew, and all of them were after the snap of the football. Those are the self-destruct ones pre-snap. Jackson slides up to the 25. Atterbury, more of a line drive punt here from the 33. Jackson. 
Good field position for Oklahoma. There's their junior college transfer at quarterback, Josh Hypo. What a big ball game he had last week. 31 of 45 touchdown passes. And up front, Stalker McDougal. Now, this guy's lost some weight. He's down from 366, Dave, to about 340. They love his potential. And when they throw the football, all sorts of options, including senior tight end Matt Anderson from Moore, Oklahoma. Ball at the 43. And they'll operate out of the shotgun. Blitz coming. This is Michael Thornton with a lot of room. All the way to the 28-yard line on the shuttle pass. What a great call to start the football game. They come out and spread the field. You know, you can stretch the field vertically. You can also stretch it horizontally. Oklahoma stretches it horizontally with four wides. What do they do? A little shovel pass to the back. Great call. It's almost like a little middle screen. Very safe. If the ball's not completed, it is just an incompletion. It's not a fumble. And, boy, off to the races goes Oklahoma. They stretch it and then hitch in the middle. 29 on the advance. Hypo all day. And he throws it behind Jarrell Jackson, who was all by himself. Let's check the defensive starters for the Baylor Bears. Our Southwestern Bell wireless defensive starters. Dwight Johnson has had a good start to the 99 season. At linebacker, Rodney Smith's a converted strong safety. Led him in tackles last year. He is very active. And in the secondary, Gary Baxter may be as fine a cover corner as you will see this year in college football. He's big. 6'1", close to 200 pounds. He's from Tyler, Texas. Eiffel underneath, complete. First down yardage, Curtis Fagan. That looked like the same play they just ran. Well, this is, a, this is a little bit of a drag. Watch, he'll come from the left part of the screen, dragging across the football field underneath, underneath the linebackers. And you get a mismatch speed-wise there. You get a, a wide receiver with great speed matched up running underneath linebackers with not as much foot speed. That's what they do, spread the field and try to find the mismatches to the skill people. Screen set up, Jarrell Jackson, plenty of room, Jackson. Flag. Oh, man, he took a lick. The flag came in. Jackson gave up on it, and he paid for it. I, I wonder if they're going to call a leg whip on Michael Thornton. He went in there. He faked his little uh, shovel pass action and went in there to block. And I don't know if they're going to call tripping or, or something like that, some sort of illegal block in the middle, though. The Baylor player is down at the five-yard line, it looks like. Somebody's down on their backside. Illegal chop block. That's what the call is. I think they might have called Thornton on that because the defensive line was already engaged. Here's Jackson in the, in the slot. It's a, it's a wide receiver screen. The offensive linemen come in inside out to get their blocks, and Jackson has no... He's, he's totally unaware of what's going on. He's just striding to the end zone and gets, oh, takes an unbelievable pop. Penalize, first down. I think the man down is the guy who made the hit, Daniel Will Turner. Boy, uh, Jackson, I don't know what Jackson's looking at here. He thinks, I don't know if he doesn't see him. He's, he's gliding to the end zone, but boom. I mean, you talk about detonation. Jeez, that's a, that's a blow-up right there. Will Turner just... Absolutely. Hit him with dynamite caps on that shot. And blew himself up. Whew. Yeah, that's uh, right now the telephone's ringing. The operator's not answering on the other end. They get that long distance call. And it's just ringy, ringy. Nobody's picking up the receiver. Sounds like the hotel I stayed at. Will, there, Will Turner, he, he's trying to decide, are we in Norman or are we back in Waco? I got to make sure here. Let me go to the sideline and get my bearings. So now Oklahoma from the 32. That's complete Brandon Daniels. He gets it to the 13-yard line. Daniels was suspended for week one. 
He's a guy they want to see with the football quite a bit today. Let's check our keys to the game, Dave. Well, for Oklahoma, simple. Last week, the only negative, they had four giveaways. They, they had three fumbles and interception. Don't want to do that. They want to get Baylor in predictable situations, second and third and longs defensively. No silly mistakes, no dumb penalties, no block kicks. Play a clean football game. Second and eight. Second and eight for Oklahoma. Seth Luttrell next to Heifel. Blitz coming. Complete to Anderson. He'll get to the five. About a half a yard shy of a first down. Jason Jackson comes on the blitz. It's it's a uh, right hypo picks it up. I mean, visually he's in the shotgun. He once he gets his eyes focused off the football, he sees everything. It's right in front of him. Jackson comes. He gets rid of the football in a timely fashion. Throws it to the outside. The only guy that can make a play on the football is Anderson. But Bailey gets away with a face mask. They reached up into that face mask to tackle him. Third and short. Latrell first down. Ooh. Touchdown. Touchdown. Seth Luttrell, the junior from Muskogee. A most impressive opening drive for Oklahoma, considering they almost shot themselves in the foot. Well, they took advantage of good field position for sure. Tim Duncan makes it 7 0. In front of a sellout to Norman, the Sooners with the early lead. Second touchdown on the season for Seth Luttrell. As we take a look at our Buick scoring drive. Oklahoma goes 57 yards. Latrell caps it off from six yards away. And Heupel, four or five, throwing the rock for 68 yards. That'll work. That's a nice little mix right there. A nice, nice uh, little blend. And overcame a, a penalty that almost uh, negated the scoring opportunity. But they were inside the inside the 10-yard line. First and goal, Jackson made his play, but he was brought back to a penalty. And kicks this one off in wow. the direction of Birkins and on over his head and out of the end zone. So Baylor will have it at the 20 yard line, trailing 7 zip. Let's take a look at Latrell right here. Look on the back side. Look at the seal block. Boom. There's the knockdown right there on the back side. Latrell sees the back side cutoff block and he cuts it back inside and his power. Nice surge. Watch Latrell's pad level. Take a look at the effort he's got. You get you gotta get that forward lean going. Lower your shoulder pads. He didn't it right there. But he had the lean going enough where enough body lean when he went airborne, he broke the plane in the end zone. Pretty good effort by Latrell to go up and over. Alfred on a boot. He could run for some yards, and now he will. He'll get about six yards, and let's take a look at the Baylor Bears' keys to victory. Well, they want to win on first down offensively. That's get four or more yards on first down, and they did on that particular occasion. They want to minimize yards after catch. Oklahoma's going to make some catches, but they don't want to give up a lot of garbage yards after Oklahoma catches the football. And also, when Baylor gets in the red zone, they want to score touchdowns 75% of the time, not settle for field goals. That's been, they've only, they're only five of nine in the red zone this year for touchdown. Bush will be just short of the 30-yard line. See, now they find themselves still on schedule, Drew. They get a third makeable here. Third and very, very minimal, minimal yardage. The key is first down. Oklahoma wants to get you off schedule. They want to knock you around on first down, make it second and long, third and long, then they can use their pressure packages. If you execute on first down, it gets Oklahoma back in their heels a little bit defensively. They didn't get the snap to the quarterback. The good news for Baylor is they hold on to it. 
Where was the recovery? Is it is it short? It's short. Uh, short. He lost a little yard. He lost a little yardage. Yeah. Now Kevin Steele. I don't know if he has much of a decision backed up at his own 29-yard line. He's got to bring on the punt team. Yeah. Yeah. That's costly, that little miss exchange. Yeah, and, and it's a self-destruction right here. You know, the simplest thing. It was going to be a quarterback sneak, but the first thing you have to do is you can't jump the gun. You can't jump the play. You have to make sure that you ride the center long enough to secure the, the exchange. Atterbury. Jarrell Jackson will field it on a hop. And he gets to the 42-yard line. So, again, great field position for the Sooners. Making the tackle is number 51, Eric Clay. And hi again, everyone. Jim Knox back on the sidelines here in Norman, Oklahoma. Oklahoma with the early 7-0 lead. And something for you Big 12 fans. Don't forget, you can log on to Big12Sports.com. Check out everything and anything you want to know about Big 12 sports. Just log on to Big12Sports.com. Interesting vote this week. They ask you to vote for the best running back in the conference. Some of the names, Barry Sanders, Ricky Williams, John David Crow. A number of those guys on the list. Back up to you, Drew. All right, Jim, thanks very much. There's no shortage of great Great running backs oh. in the history of the old Big Eight. Now That's the Big sure. 12. <laughs> they go to Thornton. Not it much doing as he gets out Michael to Thornton. about the 44-yard line. It'll be second down and eight. Josh Heupel is a guy that the decided to pick the program based on what offense they were running. And at Snow Junior College, Dave, they ran a pretty similar offense to what Coach Stoops is doing here at OU. They really did, and is he efficient? He's completing 80% today. Four or five of Mrs. Riley taught me my fractions right. And I'll tell you, last week he completed 77.5% of his passes in that football game, so he's laser-like. They run a reverse. Brandon Daniels with the football. He can scoot. Flag comes in as Daniels gets it to the 32-yard line. It may have been an illegal block downfield. Or it might have been a face mask. Well, I don't know. We'll see. See what the see what the scenario is. But Chris Hammonds, the tight end. It's going to be a hold on the edge. You're right, Drew. They're going to call Hammonds on the edge. The big tight end by formation is the blocker out in the perimeter. Throws the key block, but he might have grabbed Jersey when he was doing it. Daniels in the slot up at the top you'll see him come into screen here right here big tight end working out on the edge I don't know if that's the block or I guess it was Jackson a legal block in the back down the football field and you know what the defender turned his back to the play and, and Jackson continued and, and hit him in the back and knocked him down unfortunately nice hustle down the football field but have to be just a little bit smarter one to throw the block just the second penalty all season I know we're only a little over a game old but only one penalty last week for Oklahoma that's something oh. to focus on intercepted that was the overthrow and Rodney Smith picked it off the former strong safety now playing will linebacker the ball floated on Hypo just as mechanics weren't up to snuff on that one never did plant his back foot and, and throw the football with much authority and Smith you're right Drew is a former safety now he's a linebacker Hypo rolls to his left which is easier for the left hander to throw the football but the pressure makes him throw on the run and never set his feet properly as a result footwork's off mechanics are off overthrows his intended receiver Norman Good thing he had the thigh guard there he could stick the football to. Really? He caught that five times. Yeah, this oh. is a lateral. End zone shot. And it's picked off in the end zone. Intercepted by Rodney Rideau. Oklahoma was not fooled. No, they weren't. The pressure was applied very forcefully by Brandon Moore. It was a double pass, a backward pass, which as you described, Drew, is a lateral. So then you can still throw the ball on a forward pass basis down the football field. But Moore and Rideau team up here for, for nice action defensively. Backward pass, plenty of time to throw the football. Holding on to it a little too long, though, is Cog Coggill. And floats the thing up there, throws it into double coverage. Big mistake, Rideau's all over it. How many times have you seen back-to-back -back interceptions? So the Sooners have it now at their own 20. And Heupel right back to work. Slip screen. This is Fagan. 
Second catch of the ball game, gives 17 yards. Let's take a look at this, this interception, what takes place here. Receiver, watch him back up to catch the football on the backward pass. Actually, he goes in motion. He's the motion man. And he's, he catches the, the football on the perimeter. And the, and the widest receiver takes off down the football field to run his route, and Rideau's all over it. Looks like Heifel is checking off. Blitz coming, and now whistles blow it dead. Offense, five yards, replay first down. Let's check in with Jim Knox. Knoxie? All right, thanks, Drew. I checked on Daniel Will Turner. He's now back in the game, the left cornerback for the Baylor Bears. Just jarred his back on that tackle, but he's okay, just a little sore, Drew. Okay, that's quite a wallaby delivered on Jarrell Jackson. Yes, he did. I don't know what Jackson was thinking, boy. He went into the Cadillac trot. He got in an accident. Yeah, he didn't check the traffic. No. Blitz coming. Hypo gets it away. And good defense by Baylor. Damon Mackey made the catch, but he was wrapped up immediately. Rodney Smith was there, also 25. Robert Neal, 23. Let me check that. Got an injury. Somebody's in a six-point, actually a seven-point stance down there for the for the Baylor Bears, and that's uh, Misha, the great middle linebacker. They can't afford to lose him. Boy, those seven-point stances aren't good. He packs a lot of pounds on a six-foot-one frame. Looks like uh, some, something wrong with his head. They the slide the helmet off. I wonder if he just got poked in the eye. Looks like they're checking his eye. If he wears contacts, maybe he got one poked out of there. But a lot of times, fingers get in those face masks, and uh, even though you are wearing that protective uh, gear, you, you, from time to time, you can get poked in the eye. Hopefully, that's all that happened to him. He's their leading tackler. Good-looking player. Chris Meshaw, the junior from Jersey Village, Texas. The pickup with just a yard on the play. Second down and almost 15. Long 14. Smith comes on a blitz. They pick it up. Man wide open for Oklahoma. Breaking the tackles, Mackey. Big play for Damon Mackey. Eric Clay finally wrapped him up. One of the keys for Baylor was to minimize yards after catch. Mackey makes the play, and then watch what he does after the catch. All he does is run a little bit of a, a flag pattern. One tackle missed, overrun. Second tackle missed and picks up a nice block. Mackey, the third tackle missed. The fourth guy brings him down. Mackey picks up an extra 15 yards after the catch. Yak, yards after catch. That's what Baylor didn't want to have happen. 35 yards on the advance. Heupel, deep throw just over the head. Josh Norman, who had a step. You know, sometimes Oklahoma puts so much pressure on you, on you, pressure on you defensively, with all the formations and the motion. Sometimes defensively, you lose track of where to line up. That's what happened to Baylor on that last snap. Look at the defensive front here, running around trying to determine the strength of the formation. Oklahoma lines up. Baylor's, they're still shifting. They're still moving around. They're still communicating. Uh oh, what do I do? Snap of the ball. They're not even ready. So that's what Oklahoma will do to you with the formations and the motion. They will break down your keys defensively and confuse you. Baylor showing blitz on second and ten. Luttrell just a little bit short, and Heifel got knocked on his backside. And that's one of the things that Kevin Steele and Brick Haley, the defensive coordinator for Baylor, wanted to do today. Exactly. They wanted to hurry Heifel's reads, and I think it was McKinley Bowie that, that got the hit on Heifel as he tried to throw the football. Clay, made the, Clay was also on the blitz. The pressure was in Heifel's face, and that's where they want to get the pressure. Clay comes right up the gut. 
and Heupel has to throw the football as he's still retreating from the line of scrimmage with Clay draped on him. That's exactly what Baylor wants to do, pressure in the face. They're coming again on third and ten. Heupel hangs in, complete, first down yardage, he has Anderson. Check it, 88, it's Trent Smith. Backup tight end. McKinley Bowie made the tackle, but they'll move the chains again for Oklahoma. And Charles Foster, Charles Foster absolutely detonated Heupel. Watch Foster as he makes his way in and puts the hit, but Heupel saw it coming. It was in his face, held the ball to the last minute, and threw an absolute strike. Wide open. It's amazing the patterns that the tight ends are running and others at the wide receiver position. Absolutely wide open. Oklahoma calls a timeout. They're on the move again, leading 7-zip. One of the beauties of this offense, according to Mike Leach, their offensive coordinator, is it spreads the wealth. It gets everybody involved. Well, Josh Heupel attacks all quadrants of the field. You have to defend the whole field. A little shovel pass to Thornton gets things started. Then he hits his wide receiver on a little uh, delay pattern over the middle, a little drag, fade, and get a matchup on a linebacker with the wideout. And he's throwing the football all over the field to different people. Last week, 13 different receivers caught a pass. Five different guys caught a touchdown pass. Daniels catches that one. They roll receivers in there, and they attack the field. They stretch it and attack it. It is a tough offense to defend. Game's nine minutes old already. Six have caught a pass. This is complete. Another catch for Trent Smith, the redshirt freshman from Clinton, Oklahoma. Well, last week against Indiana State. Look at this distribution, Dave. Oh, it, it's, it's amazing. As I said, 13 different people involved in these receptions in game one. And, and it goes to receivers, tight ends, running backs. You have to defend everybody and doing the same thing again today. And this guy, Mike Leach, has got it figured out. Very bright guy, and he knows the adjustments to make in his play call. Second and five, pressure coming, man's wide open, a walk in the end zone, that's Josh Norman. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Norman was in the end zone last week. And he becomes the seventh player to catch a pass today for the Sooners. Amazing. Uh, you have to, so much pressure. You have to get out of your normal defensive philosophy to defend this offense. Tim Duncan tacks on point number 14. The Sooners looking good. You know, when Houston went, and Jenkins, Coach Jenkins was making all the noise with the run and shoot, it was different, so different to prepare for in such a short amount of time. That's what Oklahoma has going for it. Preparation time is short. Take a look at the block by Latrell on the blitzing linebacker. Boom. Takes him to the turf. That allows free vision for quarterback Heupel. And then absolutely wide open, he goes to Norman. Watch Latrell again come across the backfield and knock down the blitzing linebacker. Easy pitch and catch from that point forward after the blitz pickup was secured so well. Well, you got to love to come to practice and love game days if you're a back or receiver in Oklahoma. And back during the heyday of the wishbone, maybe you get one or two thrown all season your way. Exactly. The, the wishbone, they may have thrown five touchdown passes in two seasons. They've thrown six touchdown passes in, a, in five quarters here in this offense. Let's take a look at our Dr. Pepper pass efficiency leaders. Josh Heupel, number two in the league. Bobby Newcomb leads the league, but he's become a wingback. Heupel's fifth in the nation with that 185.4 pass efficiency. That's pretty strong. Who would have thought an Oklahoma quarterback fifth in the nation pass efficiency? And that's going to skid through the end zone. So, again, Baylor will start at their own 20 as we glance at the Buick scoring drive. Eight plays, 80 yards, and Norman caps it off. The sophomore from Midland, Texas, who has a brother, John, who's quite a player at Texas Tech, Dave. We've seen him the last couple of years. Very talented safety, and he plays like a linebacker. He'll, he'll thump you. So Baylor needs to respond. Jermaine Alfred back to work. This is Elijah Perkins, who almost squirted out of that pile. 
what you have to do now is take some pressure off the offense. You, you got to stay uh, off the defense. Offensively, you have to stay on the field. You cannot go three and out. The defense has been on the field a lot. Kevin Steele, linebacker coach the last few years with the Carolina Panthers. He's been in this conference for a while, though. Very familiar with it. Here's Perkins and Elijah with the quick feet to the 33-yard line and a first down. Steele, longtime assistant at Nebraska. Let's take a look at our sleep-in first quarter numbers to date. Nine first downs, 164 yards of total offense. It's been all Oklahoma statistically, and most importantly for the Sooners on the scoreboard, they lead 14 to nothing. And the two turnovers were back-to-back -back plays, so that was an absolute wash. It was what's good for the goose, good for the gander, and it was, there was no, no edge there at all in the turnover department. Perkins again, and not fooled, Corey Callens. He got low and made the tackle. Callens, 92, the junior from Jenks, Oklahoma. Once again, talk about the importance on first down. And that time, Oklahoma won the first down battle. Second and nine is, is a package that, or a down a distance that Mike Stoops, as a defensive coordinator, likes because he can scheme a little bit and come up with a, a, a different configuration to pressure the quarterback. was throwing it in the direction of Martin Dossett. He got his feet tangled up. And John Laurie will explain the situation for us in a moment. Well, Oklahoma pressed the corner, the slot corner lined up off sides. He's trying to press a receiver that's off the line of scrimmage. And in his, in his anxiety to get up tight to the line of scrimmage, he got in the neutral zone. Five yards, replay second down. Let's take a look at it right here. Bob Stoops is saying, yeah, it's you. Right here, as, as he comes in the, in the slot, watch. He creeps up. He lines up in the neutral zone. Everybody else is back here. He's up here trying to press the receiver. He's offside, and he creeps up more. He's in the backfield. <laughs> Can't do that. He was a good yard into yes, the uh, Taylor backfield. <laughs> Short drop, Alfred, great throw, and a terrific catch, and then a flag comes face in. Face mask? One if you tackle him by the face mask. Randy Davis hauled it in. Flag came in immediately. Well, I wonder, when the contact's made, I wonder if... Defense, the penalty is declined. First down, the point of reception. Alford completing 62.5% of his passes coming into today's football game, and this is why. Good pass protection up front. He's got a lane to throw the football, vision unimpeded, and throws the ball right on the money. The interference, Woods had early contact. That's declined. They'll take the play because the yards gained were more than the penalty would have been. Take a look at the, uh, what's going on here. Baylor in the opposition. Baylor not running the ball well enough balancing themselves up in terms of yards per play running pass. Perkins stacked up Brandon Moore, the junior outside backer number 46 stepped in there. Also Torrance Marshall, the middle backer number 10. The Oklahoma defense pitched a shutout last week, but it was against a 1-double-A team in Indiana State. They faced the wishbone last week. You know, they, uh, last year, this Oklahoma defensive football team, sixth in the NCAA, second in the conference, but they were dead last in the conference in points allowed, I mean, because of penalties and turnovers. Dossett with the football, and he'll pick up about six or seven. Dragged down by Pee Wee Woods. Now it looks like Baylor has a little bit of a rhythm, Dave. Yeah, they're mixing it up a little bit better. I, I think what they have to do is throw a little bit more on first down. They don't want to get predictable, run the ball on first down, and then if you're off schedule second and long, you have to throw the football. Baylor wants to throw the football when they want to and not when they have to. There's a big difference there. Third down and four. Well short of the first down. Dossett wrapped up right away by Rodney Rideau. Boy, there was no yards after catch on that play. 
Rideau is right there to make an immediate hit and stop the journey. Very, very solid hit here by Rideau. Ball's caught. Rideau knows that he's nowhere near the first down marker. All he has to do is take Dawson to the turf, and he does so unceremoniously. Kyle Atterbury trying to pooch this one. Jarrell Jackson is back deep, and nice. this is well done. Looks like a long pass play. Killed at the six-yard line, a punt of just 31 yards, but most importantly for Atterbury, he got it down deep, and Oklahoma will be backed up. One of the interesting things that Kevin Steele told us yesterday was that he thought his team would be so fired up today that he'd have to calm them down. I think a lot of people around the country figured that Baylor would have a hangover effect coming into this football game, but he felt emotionally they were going to be ready. And they came out and played well off the bat. Bush, the guy that you thought would have the most to get over, uh, emotionally hangover, and really broke the first run very well of the game, but Oklahoma's offense puts pressure on him. He's got all day. Heifel again. Wow. What a catch by Anderson. Matt Anderson hauls it in. A flag is resting at the five-yard line. We'll see if this stands up, whether it does or not. What a terrific catch. Well, there was action going on between Thornton and the big linebacker, Misha. And I think they're going to call Thornton for, for a flag out the edge. A little bit of extracurricular going on during the course of the play, but how about Oklahoma? How confident are they backed up like that, throwing the ball out of their own end zone? Bobby Stoops a little bit confused. Offense, half a distance penalty, repeat first down. One of the things that Coach Stoops wanted to clean up at Oklahoma, they were the most penalized team in the conference the last two years. Last week he was thrilled with just one penalty. They had referees and officials at their practices all spring and all fall, as did Coach Steele. Yes. Yet today, that's their fifth marker. How about Coach Steele saying the first practice they had uh, officials at for Baylor, there were 26 penalties. That's a lot of whistles. Big opening, Thornton. He's still going all the way to the 41-yard line. 56 yards. Baylor lost contained defensively, and Thornton made him pay. He limps off the field a little bit. Looked like he had a little bit of an ankle problem at the end of that play, but they lose contained. Baylor, somebody has to get to the outside. And Thornton's out there all by himself. No quarterback support. And the little guy with the jackhammer feet's patrolling the sideline. And right there, you can see when the tackle was made, looked like he jammed his right foot into the turf a little bit. Might have a little ankle problem. So much for the bad field position. Brandon Daniels, the intended target. Crowd wanted a flag. They won't get one. That's the thing about this West Coast offense, quote, unquote, West Coast, is that when they, you get spread out and you start defending the pass, next thing you know, they're throwing the football. I mean, they're, they're running the football right at you like Thornton did. Still a little hitch in his get-along as he gets back to the huddle here. You know, Gary Baxter had the tight coverage on the play. Yep. Last week, UNLV under John Robinson threw only one pass in his direction. That's how much respect they have for Gary Baxter. Well, Coach Steele says that he's got NFL written all over him and a guy that will play a long time. Baylor brings four. And the crossing right. That's complete. Ball. And Savage lost the football. They're saying he was down. Down before the ball came out. Yep. That'll be a first down for Oklahoma. Antoine Savage gets 12, and he's the eighth player to catch a pass for Oklahoma today. Well, what, what Oklahoma does is they spread the football field, they stretch it horizontally, and then they hit seams. A little bit of a post route run. The ball's knocked out of there. Boy, it looked like Savage lost that football well before he hit the turf. To me, it looked like the ball was out of there. If it was a rule to completion, he had possession. They throw it again to Savage. And he's grabbed immediately by Rodney Smith, number 14. Oklahoma's offense is in, is in high gear, and, and this offense goes as the quarterback goes. And look at the numbers, 31 of 40. 
And now we're talking about in a season. Remember that. Since 46, the leading passers attempted 40 or less passes in a season 11 times. I'll give you an example. When they won the national championship in 85, Jamel Holloway that year threw for 517 yards and five touchdowns the whole season. Last week, Heupel had five in one game. And, and, and over two-thirds of the yards. First chapter closed in Norman, Oklahoma, and the Sooner sellout crowd loves what they've seen. OU leads 14 to nothing over Baylor. Sellout crowd in Norman, Oklahoma, and the Sooners have racked up 234 yards already. They're on the move, and they own a two touchdown lead. Look at this, yards per play. Over first down per snap. That's unrealism. Here's Thornton on the delay. He's got another big opening. And he shakes and bakes for a moment before he's dumped by Gary Baxter. Good open field tackle by Baxter. But it's enough for another Sooner first down. Michael Thornton at 5'5", 187 pounds, proves once again it's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. Look at this. Three rushes, 70 yards. You know, when he was at Carter High School in Dallas, Michael Thornton never started. Of course, they're always loaded with talent. Here he is starting for the Sooners and doing well. There's enough time on the play yeah. clock. Must be an illegal formation here or something, but they could shift out of it. What's the deal? Fire snap. Ball start offense. Five yard penalty. Somebody flinched. First down. Somebody in that two-point stance flinched once again, and I guess they're talking O'Neal. You know what? The offensive line has done a heck of a job, though, in their pass protection for Heupel. I mean, look, Baylor has tried to blitz. They've heated him up and brought six, five, and six, a lot of times six. And the offensive line and running backs, Thornton has done a good job on blitz pickup. Latrell has done a good job on blitz pickup, as well as the five behemoths up front. <laughs> Interference will be declined. Early contact, but Anderson still came down with it. He's limping. How about that throw by Heifel? Just dropped it in out of the sky. It, yeah, it, it looked like a dive bomber opened the, the trap door on the bottom, and the, and the ball came right down from the dive bomber right in his hands. Unbelievable trajectory. It started with the offensive line. Tremendous protection. Heifel's got plenty of vision and throws a beautiful pass. And then, it, and then it's finished off by Matt Anderson, who uses his body, screens off the defender with the body. The early contact doesn't phase him as he makes the catch. Sooners. Tim Duncan tacks on the extra point. Oklahoma rolling. Matt Anderson kind of locked up his knee right when he yeah, got in the end zone. Look at that. Working that left knee a little bit. You know, sometimes if, if, the, if your cleats lock into the turf and a little hyperextension, you just lock that knee backwards and Particularly if you're fighting contact from behind. First touchdown of the season for Matt Anderson. 6'1", 247-pound senior. There's Heupel. Boy, is he ever accurate. Yeah, we were talking, uh, we were act asking Mike Leach yesterday. He had Tim Couch last season at Kentucky, and he said Heupel might be a little bit more accurate than Couch. Not as much arm strength, but accuracy, maybe a little more. Dossett will twist his way out close to the 30-yard line. You know, one thing to watch right here, watch this little guy, Thornton Blitz, pick up on Misha. He's giving up almost a body. And look at him fighting in there. Unbelievable. And great job by the offensive line all the way around. Beautiful football thrown to the outside. The only guy that can make a play on it is his tight end, Anderson. And Heupel just knows exactly where, when, and how to throw that football. And the coverage is, is far from embarrassing. It's pretty good by Henderson. Bush, nowhere to go. A loss of a yard. 20, Rocky Kalmus, 92. 
is Corey Callens in the neighborhood. Let's check in with Jim Knox. Jim. All right, thanks, Grace. You can see Matt Anderson has just leapt the bench. He is now walking fine on the sidelines. The knee is A-OK. -okay. He's just smiling a little bit because he caught that touchdown. He'll be back in the game. Drew. Well, that's good news. That's three touchdown passes for Heupel today with one interception. So now in the season, he's got eight touchdowns, two picks. Four to one ratio is strong. Blitz coming, Alfred, deep ball. Nobody out there but a Sooner. Pee Wee Woods had the good coverage on Andre Fuller, and Alfred probably had to pull the trigger a little bit before he wanted to. The Buick scoring drive on the third Oklahoma touchdown. 94 yards after going 80 yards in their previous drive, and it took them just a buck 58. Anderson on the 22-yard hookup. Now, the coaching staff, they weren't too flattering when they talked about Matt Anderson's yeah. physique. They right. said, we love his ability. He said, they said uh, he looks like a guy you'd see in a beer league softball uniform. It, it, exactly. They said, you know, but he can run, and he's good, and he does run nice routes. Alfred will roll on third and 11. And the pass is broken up beautifully by Pee Wee Woods. Let's check it out. It's Mike Woods, number two. Yeah, he did a great job of route recognition and broke on the football well. He got a hand in to deflect it. You know, this defense all starts with the corners. Just an excellent job of playing the football. Route recognition was first and foremost, and then he closed on the football and just deflected it just out of the reach of Podgill. Atterbury will punt again. Fourth time he's had to punt already. And this is not his best effort. But Baylor will cover it at the 32-yard line. Baylor's had five possessions, four punts, and an interception. The Sooners lead. On first down, Heupel, all kinds of time. Now in trouble, and Heupel's going to be dropped. First sack of the day, 78 is Travis Hicks, the redshirt freshman from Joplin, Missouri. Also involved was Charles Foster. Heupel nowhere to go with the football that time, nowhere to get rid of it. Ate it, took a big, big loss right there. You talk about off schedule, seriously off schedule now. Loss of 15 on the play. What you missed while you were away was a completion of Brandon Daniels out to the 43-yard line, a pickup of 11, but now they're backed up. Catching the flat by Thornton. He's doing everything today. Look at that. Ooh, tight spin. I'll tell you what. He'd be tough to tackle in two-hand touch if he was playing in a phone booth. I'm telling you, he is he is a quick little water bug down there. And on, the, on the last touchdown drive, Thornton had the big run to get him out of bad field position. Then he had the key block on the blitz pickup on Misha that allowed the touchdown pass. Heupel, nowhere to go. Checks down to Thornton out of the backfield. Good catch. Now he gets himself righted. Missed tackle there by a linebacker, and then he spins away from a defensive back. So he made a couple of guys look silly there. Jackson couldn't get it done. Neither could Allen Pace in, in, in the secondary. Play action. Heifel down the middle. And it was broken up this time nicely by Allen Pace. He got a hand in there as Curtis Fagan was the intended target. And Oklahoma will have to punt the football. That's what happens when you get that far off schedule. When you have second and 25, that's a tough nut to crack. But if there's any offense that can get you back in a makeable third down situation, it is this spread them out West Coast style of deal. Jeff Ferguson will punt it. Andre Fuller back at his own 21. This is returnable. but not very far. 42 yards on the punt, a return of just three. Great coverage by Oklahoma. We'll step aside. Sooners leading 21-0.
40 to go in the second quarter. It's been all Sooners. Drew Goodman, Dave Lapham, Jim Knox from Norman Field. Kevin Steele's an engaging guy, and I guarantee you he will get things turned around at Baylor. But for people who are wondering, is this an emotional letdown, them being down 21-0? I don't see it that way right now. I just think they're getting outplayed. You know, outplayed, and I'll tell you, they, they don't have an answer for Oklahoma's offensive scheme. It is tough to prepare for. We'll talk more about that. Alfred's got all day, and he throws in a double coverage, and it is intercepted downfield. Mike Woods. They've been trying to pick on him, and it hasn't been a good idea. Yeah, that was uncharacteristic of Alfred because he's been making good decisions. This time, though, he just threw it up in the double coverage. Maybe a little frustration as much as anything. But Oklahoma with a defensive takeaway. Mike Woods all over it. Once again, protection decent. Plenty of time to throw the football. Nice separation. This offensive lineman gets, gets in his way as he releases the football, though. But just throwing the ball in double coverage like that is dangerous. First pick of the year for Alfred. Oh. And this is picked off by Baxter. Gary Baxter gets the pick. That's the second time today we've had back-to-back -back picks. And now a flag was thrown on the sideline. I don't know. They might have gotten Baxter for showboating for a moment. A little celebration penalty, possibly. And that, that would be a shame because now he's going to negate good field position that he's given his football team. But Baxter, the old tip throw. The ball went through the receiver's hands, went through Norman's hands, deflected off a defender, and right into Baxter's hands. He had four picks on a team that only had eight last season. He had half the interceptions. It looks like Baxter a little bit too effusive in the celebration. After the interception, dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct foul against Baylor. Baylor's ball, 15-yard penalty, first down. Take a look at Heupel now. You know, after you throw an interception, you're a defender. And Heupel gets steamrolled. Let's, and let's take a look at what happens at out of bounds, but here's Heupel trying to make a play. Gets matched up with the Keith Heinemann, and it's no matchup at all. You become a defender, and you got to protect yourself. Michael Jackson ran him over. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Dwight Johnson ran him over. Now they move it back to the 40-yard line. There's Gary Baxter. Now, he is a confident guy who plays with a swagger, but the coaching staff tells us that he's one of the most popular guys on the team. Sometimes can misconstrue that swagger, but I'll let Dion. Yeah, that swagger cost him 15 yards, evidently. Birkin just flat dropped the football. Very few things have gone right for Baylor today, and they lose seven on that odd play. Well, it's an unforced error. You know, they talk in tennis about unforced errors. This is an unforced error. It's just a pitch from the eye formation, and doesn't never gets it, never has total control of it. He drops right between his hands down his leg to the turf, and he has to just fall on top of it. No contact caused that problem. Now an uphill climb, second and 17. Screen. Bush will get it to the 33 yard line. That's a good-looking play. Now it's a manageable third down. As we look at our national car rental game summary, Heifel, a couple of touchdown passes. He does have two picks. Right, a couple of picks, too. But look at the difference in total offense. Average scoring drive, only taking a minute and 57 seconds to journey six plays and 68 yards. That's tempo. That's moving the football, ladies and gentlemen. Woo. Third down and four for Baylor. They need the 30-yard line. Have not converted on third down yet today. That is broken up. Rocky Kalma sitting in the middle. Got a big paw up and knocked it down. That's awareness right there. That's knowing where you need to drop in your defensive scheme, taking the proper angles. Nowhere for Alfred to go with the football between the linebacker, over the linebacker, and in front of the safety. 
And look at the quarterback coach is at Baylor. <laughs> well, actually, he's coaching the running backs, but he's working with Alfred on that one, too. Yeah, ex exactly. Excuse me. When I see him, I always think quarterback. Right. The former Nebraska great quarterback, the All-American. And, of course, Kevin Steele knew him well. He recruited him right. to Nebraska. And now he is coaching for Kevin Steele. Flag comes in on Atterbury's pooch punt that gets in the end zone. It looked like there was a big horseshoe at the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure if Baylor had enough people up at the line of scrimmage. You need seven on the line to make it a formation that's acceptable. And it looked like there were too few, too many guys too far off the line. Illegal procedure, kicking team, penalty is declined, touchback, first down, Oklahoma, timeout on the field. might sound unbelievable, but Oklahoma has not won their league opener since they beat Iowa State in the old Big 8 1994. Right now they lead 21 to nothing, but it's still early. 10.32 to go in the second quarter. Josh Heifel and the OU offense back to work from their own 20. They give it to Thornton. And Michael will get 10 more before Gary Baxter straightens them up. I love this kid. I mean, he is an effort man all the way. You know, he's not, he's not the least bit bashful about blocking people. He, he's a good catch out of the backfield, and he can also run the football. Take a look at how things start. Good blocking up front, but then Thornton breaks some tackles, and he just makes things happen on his own. Look at two, three guys trying to take the little man backwards. Just big heart. Yeah, give it to him again. That's going to kill his average, Dave. Before that carry, he had four totes for 78 yards. And Mrs. Riley would tell you, what's that, about 19-plus? <laughs> yeah, that's getting, that's creeping up in that 20, 20 per lug mark, and that's pretty strong. Of course, you break one for what he break one for 56, I think. You break one for that kind of, yeah, 56 yards from the shadow of their own end zone. He was huge on that drive. Thornton, I'll tell you what, five foot five. He is inch for inch, one heck of a football player. Second down and seven. Latrell and Thornton and out of the shotgun. They fake it to Latrell. Heifel again with plenty of time. And a late throw out of bounds. So it'll be third down. Baylor with good coverage downfield. Yeah, Oklahoma deciding to roll into the short side of the field. You got a left-handed quarterback, so they're deciding to roll him to the left. The ball was on the left hash mark, so you've not much of the field to work with. You're pretty much limited to one-third of the field to throw the football into. To throw late back across the field, Heupel doesn't have that kind of arm strength. He doesn't have couch, or he doesn't have Elway, or arm strength of that caliber. But boy, if you're open, he'll feather it in there. Third and seven. The Sooners need the 41. Heupel dropped at the 19. Second sack of the ball game. 82's Dwight Johnson. The captain of the defense. He's the one that knocked Heupel down on the interception. On Baxter's interception. And I'll tell you, Baylor has got to start to take advantage of the defense playing a little bit better. Baxter turns over Oklahoma. Uh, Baylor offense does nothing about it. They go backwards. And now, Baylor's defense blows their next once again. And, and Baylor's offense will have decent field position. they got to start moving the football. There's Andre Fuller. Back at his own 37. Ferguson's punt is off the side of his foot, but he gets pretty good roll. Dies at the 40-yard line, a punt of 39 yards. At the conclusion of our ball game today, we'll be selecting our BMW play of the game. 35 to go in the second quarter. The Sooners have had most of the plays today, leading 21-0. Jermaine Alfred, last year, rotated time with Odell James. We expect to see some of Odell James, a former high school All-American today, but it really is Jermaine Alfred's job now. He's playing well. He's playing at a, at a high level of efficiency, but that interception threw into double coverage, uncharacteristic. Bush, somehow, Make something positive out of what was a near disaster. 
Rocky Kalmus had him initially in the backfield. Rodney Renault finally wrapped him up number 45. Sellout crowd here. The Sooner faithful. I'll tell you, one of the best lines of the week, Mike Stoops said the focus and attention on Oklahoma football is beyond enormous. These people love their football, and they are here supporting this ball club big time. Alfred wants to set up a screen. He's got it to Bush, cutting back. And across midfield to the 48-yard line, he'll also pick up a first down. If you give Daryl Bush some room, He's fun to watch. Well, as a freshman, he averaged almost seven yards a carry. Last year, it was a setback for him, though. He got up to 205 pounds. He melted down. He lost 20 pounds, and he's playing very, very well this season. Unfortunately, he had the tragic play last week against UNLV that was very costly, and he was despondent, to say the least. He couldn't even address the media until the following day until he collected himself. You can certainly understand that. No doubt. Blown up in the backfield. There's a the middle backer, Torrance Marshall, the junior college transfer from Boonville, Missouri. He had 15 tackles last week. 11 of them were unassisted. And Mike Stoops said he's got a Jeff Kelly body. This kid's got tremendous physical abilities. And here he is. It makes the read not untouched. Mistake up front, the offensive line. You can't double a down lineman and let a linebacker blitz and free and clear like that. It's too easy. You gotta, you gotta make those plays when nobody lays a fingernail on you. They say he's built like a Greek god, and he also has a 41 inch vertical leap, so he's probably a pretty good hoopster, also. <laughs> Alfred, good strike. Caught by Randy Davis at the 40 yard line. Now it'll be third down and just a couple. Second catch for Davis. Well, that was a blue dart. He, he, he threw that ball well, very accurately, and, and with plenty of uh, plenty of velocity. Baylor has to get on the scoreboard. Less than six and a half minutes to go in the half. Right now, being whitewashed, down 21 points. You've got to gather some kind of momentum to go in the locker room on a positive note. Get some points on the board. Here comes the Sooner sellout. Jermaine Alfred didn't like what he saw, and he calls a timeout. It's a big play, third down in the long yard. Baylor's had a couple of opportunities in this football game, and they've turned it over a couple of times and lost it on a short field on downs. When Oklahoma got in rhythm offensively, though, Drew, de uh, Baylor's defense just didn't have, didn't have any answers. I mean, there were guys running wide open, tight ends, wide receivers, running backs. It didn't matter. Uh, Baylor tried pressure packages. Oklahoma was picking everything up, and, and, the, and Oklahoma jumped out to a big lead as, as a result of their offensive execution. Let's pay a visit to Jim Knox while we have a moment. Knoxie? All right, Drew, I got to tell you what's coming up on the Sonic America's Drive-In Halftime Report. We will have Big Dave Lapham's coaching tips. Big Dave goes over the offensive line. We'll take a look back at week two in the Big 12. Also some preview of the Big 12 matchup set for later today. That's all coming up on the Sonic America's Drive-In Halftime Report. Drew? All right, Jim, was that, was that you growling in the background? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 miss, I miss breakfast. My stomach's rumbling a little bit. Yeah, you look like a donut short of three bills again. Yeah, hey, I'll tell you what, i got to hit pregame mill a little harder than I have been. This is killing me. Third and short for the Bears. Bush will have the first down. Rodney Rideau made the tackle. It looks like he has the first down. Yeah, it sure does. It's close. Lagway with a nice lead block for his compatriot, Bush. Lagway is a great fullback with the football in his hands. Tremendous skills. Good runner, good catch of the football, improving as a blocker. But you know what? They haven't gotten him the football today. They really haven't. They're talking about doing that. He's up in front. There he is up in front of Bush. He's got the lead block at the linebacker level. He had a nice one. It's a nice little rejection right there. Stunning the defensive player, Terrence, Mar Terrence Marshall, and knocking him backwards. But he is a guy you have to find a way to get to the football. Uh, we had him against North Carolina State last year when he broke about seven tackles. It was one of the best runs I've seen in college football last season. Yeah, that, that, was, that was an amazing run. Oh, they tore the jersey off him, but he wasn't about to give up. I mean, he was bucking and bucking big time, boy. He kept that engine chugging. 
That's why last year was such a disappointment for Baylor. Huge upset over North Carolina State after they had knocked off Florida State. Right. But that was just one of two wins they had all of 98. Now they give it to Lagway and the big fella. We'll get to about the 34-yard line. Corey Callens, 92, grabbed him around the legs. Lagway, 6'1", close to 250 pounds. So he's got that low center of gravity. It's tough in the secondary when you have to make the tackle. And, and nobody has slowed Lagway up. Second and six for Alfred and Baylor. Here's Bush, runs into Callens. And Torrance Marshall, that ended abruptly. Well, Baylor ran the counter. They pulled the right tackle and right guard. They got through clean, but it closed behind them. There was no hole after the offensive line got down the football field. Callens is a guy that uh, is, is versatile. Play defensive tackle, defensive end for Oklahoma. They, they like his versatility. Third and seven for Baylor. They're looking to get it to the 28-yard line. Jermaine with room. He'll have a first down out of bounds at the 22. He surveyed the field and said, you know what? I think I'm the best option here. <laughs> exactly. You know, at some point when there's nowhere to go with the football, tuck it and go when you've got good feet. And Alfred definitely has that. Alfred can, can make some plays with his with his jackhammer feet down the field. Birkins, make the, make the block. Birkins ran by one defender and then never got downfield to block anybody else. Tailback, I guess he decided he wasn't paid to block for his quarterback, but could have made it the path a lot easier. And Birkins dives inside the 20 to perhaps the 19. You know, it's interesting. That was the 12th play Baylor's had, Dave, on first down today. All 12 have been running plays, and one of the things Kevin Steele wanted to do was mix it up a little bit, and they really haven't done that. Well, they, they thought their best down to throw the football was going to be first down, and, and they wanted to win that first down battle and, and average at least four yards per first down effort. And uh, they, they've gotten away from that. They've gotten a little bit too predictable in their play calling, possibly. Perkins again, nowhere to run. Waiting with open arms, Jeremy Wilson Guest, the 300-pounder from Jones, Oklahoma. He said, come to me, baby. Man, this guy, he's a, he's a shot put with legs. 6'1", 300 pounds. I tell you, he separates from the play. And 6'1", 300, when he makes the hit on you, you're not going anywhere. You got to take a little fluid after that type of play. It's exhausting out there trying to move that 6'1", 300 around. Third down at nine. And another timeout on the field. This time Oklahoma calls timeout. Let's visit again with... Jim Knox. Jim? Thanks, Drew. Prentice got on the sidelines today. You may recognize him. He's a former Oklahoma football player, first African-American football player at Oklahoma back in 1958, All-American, academic All-American, and yesterday, a big dedication. They renamed the Oklahoma Ath Academic Center after Prentice Scott. It's now the Prentice Scott Academic Center. It houses computers, state-of-the-art equipment, you name it, they have it. Great human being, Prentice Scott, and a heck of a football player, guys. Absolutely. Uh, Prentice, class Act. Class Act. Prentice God is an associate commissioner of the Big 12 Conference. Yes, sir. And, and you know, that's he's the type of alum that you like to have at a university. Somebody that uh, did well as a student and athlete on campus and then has taken that to another level after leaving the university and, and doing something positive with his life. Great players on the field. They've had their share of academic All-Americans as well. Yes, they have. Most definitely have. As has Baylor. Baylor, a fine academic institution. We were talking about one earlier, J.J. Joe, their former quarterback. Yes. Third down and nine. Alfred under pressure in the flat to Lagway. And he breaks one tackle, but could not break the second tackle of Rodney Rideau. And he will be about seven yards short of a first down. Well, 
Ante Jones. Let's take a look at uh, a little action right here. Ante Jones off the slot, the safety blitz. Nice hit on the quarterback, hurrying the throw, but he throws to the area vacated by the safety on the blitz, and he gets the ball to Lagway. Not a whole lot of yards generated. Have to settle for the field goal opportunity. 35-yard attempt by Kyle Atterbury. That's good. And Atterbury smokes it through, so Baylor is on the board. They needed seven, they get three. That's the first points allowed by the Oklahoma defense this season. And it comes with three minutes to go in the sixth quarter of defensive play. Five quarters of shutout football. And with three minutes to go in the in the sixth quarter of football, Baylor finally gets on the board. Three minutes to go before halftime. We talked to Kevin Steele yesterday about a number of topics, and one of the topics he addressed was where he wants to take this Baylor football program. Here's what he had to say. Every phase of our game is getting better. And I think that's probably the reason that the players have bounced back so so well is because they know that. I mean, they know. Uh, it's hard for an outsider to look at a football program and really know what goes on. A lot of people think they do, but the fact is we all know the people that are around football that nobody really knows what goes on within a team except the people that are there. I have to tell you, Dave, I was amazed, and I know you were also after visiting with them yesterday. They had such an upbeat attitude. You wouldn't have known what happened just a week ago. No question. It's all positive, and it starts with that gentleman right there. And he said this football team has not seen the coaching staff panic, and they won't. This coaching staff is going to be even keel emotionally. You're not going to see big peaks and valleys and blow-ups and that type of thing. They're teachers, and they're going to be constructive in criticism. They're not going to panic. Atterbury hammers the football. This is going to get out of the end zone also. Well, Kevin Steele is 41 years of age, and he has earned this head coaching job at Baylor. Under Dom Capers for a few years, under Dr. Tom Osborne for about six years at Nebraska. He also coached under Pat Jones, who's now in the NFL with the Miami Dolphins at Oklahoma State. And he played for Johnny Majors and then coached at Tennessee as well. Pretty good tree right there. Pretty good coaching tree. And he was part of that a, a national championship in Nebraska. So he knows. And that Carolina Panther team went to the NFC championship in their second he knows how to build a winner. There's no question. And the football to Latrell. And he gets knocked off his feet by 55, Jason Jackson. One other thing about Kevin Steele and the Baylor program, we've talked so much about what happened last week, and it became a national story. The last play of the game, the fumble returned by UNLV. But in week one, they lost in overtime right. to Boston College. They missed two extra points in that game. You talk about resiliency. This team has to be a Super Bowl. I mean, you know, it's a deal where they should have beaten BC, and the kicking game lets them down. They should have beaten UNLV in tragedy strikes in the last play. Another short gain. This time, Chris Weshaw back in there at middle backer steps up. So it'll be third down and about four. Clock moving before the next snap. It'll wind down inside two minutes to play. And Baylor has to look at things and really should be 2-0, and oh, not 0-2. Oh they very easily could be. I mean, for a, a, play, a, a play here or there, and that's what's so frustrating. Heupel changed the play. This will be a first down. Jarrell Jackson. Armistead grabbed him around the ankles, or he might still be going. Pickup of 20. Heupel, uh, Heupel really did a nice job of, of checking that time. He saw a little weakness, made a check. His, his fullback, Latrell, shifted from one side of the formation to the other to do a blitz pickup. He ran the receiver screen that he was so, so successful for Oklahoma in the early stages of this season. And Heifel was trying to get it to number 90. Matt Anderson couldn't hook up. Good to see Anderson back on the football field. be second down and 10. A reminder coming up at halftime, Jim Knox will be your host for the Sonic America's Drive-In Halftime Report. That's about 119 away. 
talk a little pass protection, and the offensive line has done a fantastic job of protecting Hypo in this first half. He's got time again, and he's got a completion of the 40-yard line. Curtis Fagan calls it in. Gary Baxter gobbled him up. That's a... No matter what the field position, no matter the time on the clock, this offense can strike from anywhere. It is big play written all over it. You have an injury, Fagan working his way to the, to the sideline with a little difficulty. Heifel's throw broken up by Jason Jackson, who almost had a pick. Should have. Ball hit him right in the hands. He's, he's not going to like that one. That, that was served right up there for him, but he couldn't secure it with the Muckers. Just the offensive coordinator for, for Oklahoma, Mike Leach. Take a look at Jackson here. Hypo thinks that uh, he can get the football by Jackson before he can react, but no, Jackson right there. And knocked it to the turf. Trips to the top on second and 10. Baylor drops seven. Eiffel just does get it away, and then he gets sandwiched back at his own 45-yard line. Foster once again providing the pressure. He's been in the backfield regularly. He's had more than one hit on Heupel this afternoon. He's, uh, he's been laying it out in the line. Heupel's got some pretty good numbers going once again. 245 yards. Look at that. 162 of those yards are after the catch, after the reception. So 17 of 28 is a nice ratio, a nice com completion percentage. But yards after catch have been monumental in this football game. And Baylor doesn't like that. That was one of the keys to minimize that. Checks off underneath. Luttrell is dropped five yards short of a first down. Good open field tackle by Rodney Smith. How many receivers did he look at on that play? He, they, they rushed four and dropped seven. He looked at he looked at every receiver he had out in the route. I think you go for it here if you're Oklahoma. There's really not much of an advantage to punt. You might only pick up 21 yards if it goes in the end zone. It's too long of a field goal opportunity. Your defense is playing well. There's less than a half a minute. Go for it. calls a timeout with 19 seconds left in the half. It would be a 52-yard attempt right now by Tim Duncan, who had no field goal attempts last week. Heupel talking to Leach right now, the brain trust in a in a little bit of a little bit of a brainstorming session. I don't think that that necessarily Oklahoma is going to is going to hail Mary the football or put the ball into the end zone. They just want to make sure that Baylor does not have another offensive opportunity. If they can score, that's uh, icing on the cake. But they just want to keep the ball out of Baylor's hands as much as anything at this point in time. They should be able to do that if they generate a first down here on this fourth down opportunity. I mean, they can just run the clock out to end the half. Heupel's a very, very quick-minded young man. Leach likes the fact that, that Heupel put so much time into film study. I mean, he really, really is a kid that knows every nuance of the offense. He came to Oklahoma because of the responsibility the quarterback had in this particular offense. Instead of touring campus and looking at the co-eds in the buildings, he watched seven hours of film with Mike Leach over a two-day time frame and decided this was the place for him. Yeah, they said, he didn't want to look at any of the buildings, none of the facilities, none of the night spots. Let me see what the quarterback does. Show me tape. He looked at every cut. Give me the, give me the film room. Yeah. Fourth and five. Heifel got a man. First down. Great catch. No, Daniels lost it. Yep. He bobbled it, dropped it. Brandon Daniels had it, had enough for a first down, could not secure it. So with 13 seconds left, Baylor will take over. Now you have to have full possession. Heupel delivers the ball accurately. He does have a nice touch on the football. He has to secure it. Nope, never really had full possession with both feet down. Just a little bit of a strip action by Baylor defensively. Knocked it out of there. This is interesting because Baylor, good thing this isn't in Waco. Baylor's going into the formation that most of their fans yeah. would have liked to see in the news last week. And a mock cheer here from the Oklahoma crowd because yeah. they know too. 
Yeah, that's what they wanted to see him do late in the football game. In retrospect, of course, hindsight's always 20-20. Or better. Yeah. 21-3, <laughs> to three, our score at halftime. Oklahoma has been very sharp offensively and very good defensively. Let's go downstairs to Jim Knox. Knoxie? All right, thanks, Drew. Coach, you have to be fairly pleased, other than that late field goal by Baylor. You guys have controlled both sides of football. Yes, but uh, our offense, Zach, we've stopped ourselves really in the last three, four drives. We There's no reason for what we've done. We ought to have been able to, to move it a little bit more than we did there at the end. Anything we can look for in the second half may be a little different? Hopefully a little better execution by us. All right, best of luck, yes. Coach. Drew? All right, Jim. Coaches never, happy. never ever never. satisfied, are they? Never. 21 to 3, our score at the break. Coming up, the Sonic America's Drive In Halftime Report. Kevin Steele and Baylor down 18 to the Oklahoma Sooners. Halftime in Norman, Oklahoma at Memorial Stadium in Owen Field. The Sooners leading 21 to 3 over the Baylor Bears. Back upstairs with Dave Lapham. I'm Drew Goodman. Michael Thornton's a whole lot of fun to watch in a small package, isn't he? Boy, he really had he really is. Ten different receivers have caught the football, but Michael Thornton has kept them honest, running the ball for 83 yards on six carries. Highlighted by this 56-yard scamper up the sideline to give Oklahoma a good field position after being backed up. He started the football game off exceptionally strong as well. Ran a little bit of a shovel pass, almost a middle screen type look that got Oklahoma off and running in that West Coast offense into high gear. Let's see what Michael Thornton does in the second half and Hype will be looking for him amongst others. 21 to 3 at the break. Back in Norman, Oklahoma with Dave Lapham and Jim Knox. I'm Drew Goodman. We apologize. The Kick has occurred. Oklahoma after a completion of Matt Anderson and a nice little run by Michael Thornton has it second down and two out at the 43 yard line. You know, Oklahoma scored on three of their first four possessions of the game. The final four possessions, Baylor did a very good job. Well, I think Bob Stoops, though, made a good point that Oklahoma self destruct a little bit, too. Just didn't hit open people and and didn't play as efficiently as they did in the first uh, handful of drives. Got a Baylor defensive player down at midfield. That's oh, an excuse o me, Oklahoma player down at midfield. That's Anderson? Yeah, it is. It's Matt Anderson. Matt Anderson's down again. He was down after the touchdown so that, that he again? scored. Huh. Looked like his knee locked up. Came back in the football game. And he's wearing, see, he's got, he's got a little uh, rubber sleeve on the left knee that he didn't have on at the start of the game. See the rubber sleeve here on the left knee? That wasn't there at the start of the football game. After the touchdown reception, he came up with a little bit of a knee problem, hyperextension, and uh, he caught a pass to start the second half off here, and I think that uh, I think he may have jazzed that knee up once again. And this is the touchdown pass to Anderson where he may have hyperextended that knee. Pretty good coverage. There was interference called. There was early contact, and Anderson injured that left knee a little bit. You can see him already limping in the corner of the end zone after the successful touchdown reception. So he departs with three catches on the day. So they had that rubber sleeve to try to heat it up and, and try to keep it loose, but obviously a little bit more severe than initially thought or compounded on that play. Second and short, Heupel back to work. And he's got Chris Hammonds, the backup tight end. That is the 11th receiver to catch a pass today for Oklahoma. Once again, the drag pass to the tight end. Just the tight end coming across the football field late. There he comes into, into picture. Just dragging across five yards down the football field underneath the linebackers. Nobody's in this in the right area code or zip code to make a play. If you're eligible, Hypo will find you. No doubt. Underneath, Thornton breaks a tackle. Michael Thornton, first down yardage to the 32. Jason Jackson. And Chris Mishaw wrapped him up. Yeah, there was a, a broken uh, tackle. Thornton making yards after catch once again. We saw in the first half of the 200-plus yards that Oklahoma had, almost 170 of those were generated after the reception. Heifel racking up some serious numbers now. Helped immeasurably, though. If you're a running back or receiver, it doesn't matter. After you catch the football, you become a running back. Break tackles and make yards. Yeah. 
Flip it out to Hammonds. Well, Dave, you often describe a play like that as a long lateral. Exactly. It's it's controlled passing game. And Joe Montana executed it so well in San Francisco. How many times did you see Joe Montana throw a seven-yard pass to Jerry Rice that became a 77-yard touchdown? And, and this, this, is, this is almost, uh, in, in, instead of a pitch out to the right side, it's a, it's a little bit of a toss down the football field. I mean, Bob Stoops described this as a wishbone in front of the quarterback instead of behind him, throwing the ball down the field instead of behind him. That's an interesting way of looking at it. Thornton bounces it. Armistead gets him around the ankles, but he gets very close to another first down. Looks like where they mark it will be just shy of a first down. It'll bring up third down. And the one thing that's great about this offense, Mike Leach has told every single skill person on the field, be alert, get your head around to the quarterback, because you never know when the ball's coming to you. Everybody has to stay alive. Let's take a look at, at Daniels. Nice little crack back right there, taking the linebacker out of the play. So that allows the little scat back, Michael Thornton, to get to the edge. And Heifel takes it himself. On the QB sneak, he gets four yards. He only needed about four inches. Opening drive of the third quarter for Oklahoma. Starting to really take control of that line of scrimmage big time, Drew. Look at Heupel, 295 yards in the air. 171 of those are after the catch. Baylor will be very disgusted with that ratio, that percentage of yards after reception. Josh Norman in the backfield now with Thornton. Heupel all day, man wide open, touchdown. Curtis Fagan gets in the end zone. He got two flags. Thrown Jarrell Jackson. I don't know if they're going to call offensive pass interference or not. They're covering up to talk about it right now. But there is a flag on the play. Let's see if this stands. Great blitz pickup by Josh Norman as well, giving Heupel an opportunity to throw the football down the field. Pass interference offense. 15-yard penalty. Right, take one off. Take one off the board there. They're calling Jackson for offensive pass interference. Take a look at the in sync replay. This is the penalty is going to be called here. Take a look at Heifel, what he sees. Jackson kind of gets in the way and picks a couple of defenders off. I can see why the call was made. Curtis Fagan, the beneficiary of a, of a pick by Jackson as he took a couple of bowling pins down to the down the lane. Last week, Oklahoma had just one penalty. This week, seven for 60 yards. Bob Stoops will not be happy with that. No, that one's a big self-destruction penalty. That takes points off the board. Those kill you. Now it's first down at 25. They get it in the flat, and Josh Norman is run out of bounds after a minimal gain. First and 25s are tough to overcome, but if any offense can, it's Mike Leach's. But you want to get a little bit more than that on first down. Now you've got to get a bunch of yards on second down just to get in a third and makeable situation because you're still monumentally off schedule. Double slot for the Sooners. Latrell, the lone setback. stands in and delivers the pass complete to the 22-yard line. Tackled or caught by Brandon Daniels. Tackled immediately by Armistead. And now a little bit easier on third down. Let's take a look at what's happening up front for Oklahoma. Only got four guys rushing, but look at them picking up the twists inside here. A little bit of a stunt going on. Crisscrossing. They've sorted out very well. Giving the quarterback, Heupel, all kinds of time to throw the ball down the field. Heupel complete. That'll be a first down. Jarrell Jackson, fittingly, the man who was called for the pick, picks up the first down yardage on the reception. Well, it was first and 25. 
look at Jackson right here. Trips. Jackson is the lead receiver. He ends up just hooking up. Gets down the football field to about the 11-yard line. Hooks up. Makes himself as a presentable target. Secures the football. Nice execution. First and 25. No problem. They pick it up, and now it's first and goal at the 8. comes in as Hammonds is buried at the three-yard line. They ran the tight end screen. Luttrell, the fullback, had a nice kickout block to get Hammonds started up inside, but another flag on Oklahoma, looks like. The guard, the flag, no penalty. Picking it up. Let me ask you something, Dave. This is a very difficult offense, obviously, to defend. How do you go about getting it done? It, it's tough on a, on a week. You have one week to prepare, Drew, and all season long you see a different style of offense than preparation allows you for this particular scenario. It takes you out of your defensive pattern, your defensive rhythm. It's very, very disruptive. It's almost impossible to prepare for in a week. Thornton. by Curtis Henderson, the uh, strong safety, stepped up and stopped the play. So it'll be third down and goal at the three. And let's check in again with Jim Knox. Jim. All right, thanks, Drew. Right now working on Matt Anderson on the training table. They're putting ice on his left knee. I talked to the bench, and they told me word is he's doubtful. So right now the big tight end for Moore, Oklahoma, doubtful on his return. Yeah, the way he left the field, it did not look like he'd be back. No, they had to put that rubber sleeve on at the half, and it, it wasn't enough. End zone shot, and it's incomplete. Chris Hammonds, the intended target, and I don't know if they would have given him a touchdown anyhow. By the time he got his hands on it, he was out at the one. He feels like he caught the football, though. He feels like they're taking a the catch away from him. He's just aggravated at himself that he did not catch the football when he had the opportunity to do so. Hypo delivers a strike. It's right there, and it goes right between his arms, between his legs. But the ball hit the ground, yeah. He kicked it back up with his feet and legs, but it already hit the turf. So we'll see Tim Duncan. This is basically an extra point from a bad angle. Touchdown. Wow. Hammonds gets his score. Patrick Fletcher, the backup quarterback's the holder. And he throws a touchdown. How do you like that? Just another something for the opposition to look at on game tapes as they get ready to play Oklahoma. They even look nice and crisp running their routes after the after the field goal fake. The officials are conversing about this. I don't see flags anywhere, but what's up? Did everybody report eligible numbers? John Laurie's going to let us know, I believe. There's no replay. It's not the NFL. He's not going over looking at a monitor or anything. He's going over to talk to Bob Stoops. Again, no flag was thrown. No, there's nothing on. No, no laundry. No hankies on the field. You talk about a new attitude. You talk about instilling confidence and a way you want to play. Bob Stoops did it on that play. Offense. Delay a game. Ooh, that wipes out. That, all about? that wipes out the touchdown, and there was never a flag thrown unless we no, missed it. There sure wasn't, unless it was picked up instantaneously. They're still talking about it in the back line of the end zone. I thought he before. said before the play. Didn't yeah, he? he said before the before the play, delay a game. Was it a deal where they had a lot of people in the huddle and, and were disguising what they were going to do by running people out late? Bob Stoops doesn't like it. I mean, he can't figure out what's going on. Do they have more than 11 in the huddle and run out late? I don't know. I mean, that's, maybe that, but that's illegal that, participation. That, that's illegal participation. Delay a game. I, I don't. We'd have to see. A, a, there's no play clock expiration that, that I could determine. And, and wide open in the back of the end zone. Nobody covers the 
tight end. I mean, he is all by his lonesome and his Hammonds. They lose track of him. But I don't know what the delay of game was. It, the, it wasn't the play clock. What was it? There was no flag that I saw. And, and I, I don't recall hearing a whistle because everybody kept going. Now where's he going? Is he going to get on the phone and talk to the supervisor of officials long distance? I don't understand what's going on here. This is getting NFL-like. Yeah, there's no monitor. He's not going to go look at the puppet show like they do in the NFL. But he's talking to somebody. Well, they're, they're trying to check to make sure that they get the proper time on the clock. Because that play, all, that, all the time that went off the clock, that touchdown to Hammonds is null and void. They have to put it back on the clock. See, Coach Stoops not pleased. He keeps saying unbelievable, unbelievable, like he's never seen anything like this one. He's totally confused. I don't, I'm, obviously, he's not gotten a clear explanation in his, in his mind as to why the call was made. I would tend to doubt they'll fake this one. This will be a 25-yard attempt by Duncan. Yep. And he splits him. 24 to 3. So they lose four points in that transaction, but they lead by three touchdowns. College football is brought to you by National Car Rentals. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. By Sitco, you know me. And by Dodge. building in the background on the campus of the University of Oklahoma in Norman. And it's a pleasant afternoon. More pleasant, of course, if you're a Sooner fan yes. than a Bear fan. Three touchdowns more pleasant. And one of those high short kicks. Dossett on the run-up will get it to the 31-yard line. And Baylor has not been in the end zone today where they'll set up shop. The Buick scoring drive for Oklahoma, 14 plays, another long drive, 72 yards. Duncan with the 25-yard field goal is first of the year. And let's try to get what occurred on the touchdown on the fake sorted out with Jim Knox. Jim. All right, thanks, Drew. I just talked to Tim Crowley, the head linesman official here, and he told me what happened was the play clock went to zero. They caught that. They called delay game, and then they had to put more time on the clock. So that's the explanation from that as far as Tim Crowley, the head lineman, is, linesman is concerned. All right, Daryl Bush runs into Torrance Marshall. The strange thing about that, and the reason I'm sure Coach Stoops was so upset, is Where was a flag, flag was never flown yeah. and the whistle was never blown. Where was the flag? And, and also, if the clock did expire, boy, that was a quick clock. When did they start that thing? All they did was line up to kick a field goal in, in normal time and snap the football. I didn't think that was exorbitantly a uh, big amount of time that took place there. It looked normal to me. So, who knows? Bob Stoops is trying to figure it out still, I guess. Second down and 12. Every first down play today, Baylor has run the football. And they've been off schedule a high percentage of the time as a result of it. Play action. Alfred, and he has to just throw it into the ground. Well covered was Andre Fuller. That's a guy they wanted to get the football to plenty today, and they have not been able to. Our Sitko, you know me. Yes, question I do. of the day. Yes, yes I, I, I We know each other. I made my coaching debut in Waco against Baylor. It was the first of my 157 career NCAA wins. Who am I? Who? Who? Mrs. Riley has not called on you, Dave. We'll get to you later. Poor Shaq. Third down and 13. Alfred Flush, nowhere Ooh. to go, and he's dropped. Rocky Kalmus got him, the sophomore from Jenks. First sack of the day for the Sooners. He came with a double blitz off both edges. Take a look at the double blitz taking place here. Both of them come. Line, both, a tackle tries to pick one up, back another. He escapes, steps up into the pocket, but Kalmus keeps the pursuit going and finalizes. Excellent effort defensively. Never say die. Baylor on their opening possession of the second half goes backwards. Atterbury. 
Jarrell Jackson lost it. Uh oh, still on the ground. And Baylor, I believe, has the football. Jackson and Pee Wee Woods. Jackson lost it, picked it up. Pee Wee Woods kind of knocked it out of his hands again. And Baylor comes up with it. And that is the third fumble in two weeks for Jarrell Jackson. He put it on the ground twice last week. Absolutely. This time, first time it's on him. We've got to secure the football. Now he picks it up. The Pee Wee in blocking kind of peels the football away from him, separates it again. So Baylor's in business with a short field. Backup linebacker Andre Taylor made the recovery, and there is Jarrell Jackson. Don't want to be labeled a fumbler. Three and two weeks, though, isn't good. Here's the counter to Bush. Too much penetration. Kalmas hit him initially. Rocky Kalmas, number 20, was a freshman second team All-American last year. An honorable mention, all Big 12 player. And you can see why. He's been everywhere today. Last season, 20% of his tackles were for loss. It's pretty strong. He played for Coach Tremble down the road near Tulsa, Jenks, Oklahoma. They've had a great, great program there. Three state titles in a row at Jenks. Second and seven. And a flag. All start. And this one will be erased. A little early motion up front. Pirate snap, false start, offense, five yard penalty, repeat second down. That's one thing we've talked about a few times. Both of these coaches acutely aware of penalty problems their teams had last season. Coach Steele, Coach Stoops, both trying to rectify it. Officials at every single practice. And they performed well from a penalty standpoint, a lack thereof in week one. Week two here, though, a little bit of a problem once again. Self-destruction, penalties. Incomplete, good coverage. Trying to get it to Reggie Newhouse, the son of former Dallas Cowboy Robert Newhouse. And this Newhouse is built more like mom. This Newhouse is long and lean. Robert Newhouse was short and squatty. Boy, yeah. he, he got sandwiched between a couple of defenders there. Hey, Robert's in the house today. Reggie goes 185 pounds. Each of Robert Newhouse's quads weighed 185 pounds. Yeah, he hit some serious quads, no doubt. Third and 13, screen to Bush, nowhere. Torrance Marshall, the middle backer, gets him. We've been talking a lot about this West Coast style offense that Oklahoma's employing, spread the football field and, and throwing the football, but Oklahoma's defense, the stoop system is in full effect here as well. It worked at Kansas State, it worked at Florida, it's gonna work here at Oklahoma. They've got decent enough athletes to make the system work, and it, it's in pretty good uh, shape here this afternoon. Kyle Atterbury to punt. Jackson calls for the foul wow. catch and dropped it. And right now, he is very shaky. Twenty-four to three, the Oklahoma Sooners leading Baylor in the Big 12 opener for both schools. Drew Goodman, Dave Lapham, Jim Knox, and a moment ago, our Sitco, you know me, Dave. Your hand is still raised. Yes, it is. The answer, Barry Switzer. Very good. Oh, actually, in the form of question, who is Barry Switzer? Who is Barry Switzer? You're absolutely right. We're giving you no money or prizes, <laughs> but Barry Switzer's first game in '73 was in Waco against the Baylor Bears, and Oklahoma has never lost to Baylor 8-0. And Thornton straight ahead for about five yards. Barry Switzer has been involved with this Oklahoma program. Bob Stoops wanted it that way. We talked to him about it. Uh, yes, we have a chance to visit with Coach Switzer on many occasions. He's been a great friend, a great friend to our entire staff. Uh, we love uh, having him around. And, um, you know, I, I recognize and have tremendous respect for, for all that he's done, uh, college football and uh, professional football. 
Here's Brandon Daniels with all kinds of room. Daniels, one to beat. A flag has come down. Yep. Finally dropped by Daniel Will Turner inside the 15-yard line, but there's a flag way back at the 31. The re receivers working down the football field, throwing the blocks. I think one of them is called for an illegal block. We shall see. If it uh, is an illegal holding, block. Holding on the edge. And it wipe out a 69-yard run because it was a lateral. Boy. To Brandon Daniels. Penalties have taken away huge plays for Oklahoma. Touchdowns, points off the board, tremendous yards off the board. Take a look. Got a bunch, all the guys bunched up in the pack. Daniels drops back. His other two receivers working down the football field to throw blocks, and you see them executing. The penalty looks like it was called on Mackey on the perimeter. Now there's three receivers out of screen. Daniels drops back. The other two work down the football field to make their blocks. And you can see the hand right outside of the shoulder pad, outside of the framework of the body. I think that was the call. But to be honest with you, I think Tiki Tacky at best. But once you see a hand on the back side of the shoulder pad, outside of the framework of the body, they're going to call it. What a bonus it is having Brandon Daniels back. Suspended last week. This guy is a tremendous athlete. 5'10", close to 215 pounds. This is his fourth position change since he arrived on campus. Right on. Nine penalties for 75 yards, though. Bob Stoops will not like that in the least. This is Trent Smith for a small gain. In fact, number eight, Brandon Daniels last year, as you look at Smith, Daniels was a starting quarterback at the beginning of the 98 season. His career has gone full circle. He came here as a receiver, went into the into the secondary as a defensive back, then moved to quarterback. Now he's back to receiver. So Brandon Daniels has gone full circle in his position in this football career. First down for the 23. Heupel. Complete again to Smith. And he's complete to Smith. Chris Meshaw made the tackle defensively for Baylor. 3.33 to go in the third quarter, 24-3. Now Smith limps off. Earlier, Matt Anderson, a tight end, limped off. What is it with the tight ends? What are they drinking? Everybody seems to have knee or ankle problems. Week he tied Kale Gundy's school mark of 341 yards passing in a game. He's going to break it shortly. He might come on this play. There yeah. it is. Yeah. Seth Luttrell. There's the record. Well, I venture to say that you're going to see Heifel with 400 yard passing days more than once this season. It's this scheme. There's a run, little run and shoot to it. There's a lot of things to it. A lot of times they flood the football field and then Heupel makes his reads and this time checks down to his fullback. Nobody picks him up coming out of the backfield. He's running wide open for 10 yards before anybody makes contact. 48 yards is the new school record. Back-to-back -back weeks. Records are set. They give it to Thornton. Still go like the Energizer Bunny. He is. Gary Baxter holds on for dear life. Well, the thing that is beautiful about this offense and about Thornton in this offense, they spread you, spread you, spread you, throw the football, and then you have to be heads up, though, and alert because they'll give the football to Thornton and, and run it at you. He's over 100 yards on just 11 trips. Almost a, a first down per lug. That's pretty strong. They're swift lugs, though. They are. They are. Yeah, you gotta, you got to get your eyes on those lugs because they happen in a hurry. Here he is again. Ooh. And Luttrell got knocked down by... I think it's Samir Alameen. And he knocked him into Thornton. Charles Munster. Thought for a moment it was Gary Baxter, but it's 16, not 18. The jersey got punched up. There's Alameen, junior from Garland, Texas. I love Thornton as a football player because he not only runs the football, he's a good catch of the football, and he will block. 
He's five foot five, but he's not afraid of anybody. He stuck his face mask in on Mishaw more than once today. Let's pick up. Third and nine. Deep ball, man out there. Oh, gonna call that. Yeah, absolutely, it's Damon Mackey. The ball was underthrown. Mackey had a couple of steps and in working back was interfered with. I think Baxter never got his head turned around to find the football. I don't know, it's all I mean. It is all I mean. He never got his head turned around to find the football. The ball's on the throw, and the receiver adjusts to come back to make a play on the football. All I mean is never, he, he, he collides before the ball's arrival, never turning his head to find the football, just face guarding, and he's called. Of course, in college football, they just mark off the yards. It's not placed where the interference took place. They just mark off the 15. A frustrating afternoon for that man, Kevin Steele. This club has just three points to show for almost three quarters of work. Right now they're being outgained 453 yards to 104. It's more than three football fields. Here's Savage. Drives inside the 30 to the 29 yard line. Antoine Savage, a true freshman from Albany, Georgia. Hey, there's two receivers to each side of the football field. They're totally spread out. Tight end Simmons is down the football field making the block to get to get Hammonds, I should say, to get things started. They run receiver screens to each side of the field in more than one way. And Leach. I mean, without the greatest talent in the SEC, led the league in time of possession, first downs, scoring. This offense is incredible. Right now, just as Baylor. Deep shot toward Thornton, and that'll be interference also. Ran right through him. Never, yeah, Jason Jackson never got his head around. No, he just he ran Thornton over. He never turned around to find the ball. Playing the man all the way, but you got to find the football. John Laurie's been busy today. Two teams that were not penalized much for Baylor through two weeks. Defense, 15 yard penalty, first down. And once again, this offense is, is really, puts a lot of pressure on the defense. You look for matchups, and you get the matchup you want, a linebacker against a scat back, and the linebacker face guarding him. Putting his hands up, not even attempting to make any play on the football, and he's called for pass interference. Once again, Mike Leach last year, when he was at Kentucky, this team, this offense set six NCAA records and 41 school records while he was involved with this offense at UK. First and 10 from the 14, Thornton resets to the left of Hypo, and he gets the football. And he squeezes it down inside the 10-yard line. Tackled by Justin Snow, 83. One of the amazing things you talk about the players he had at Kentucky, Dave. Think about this. They've come in with just one recruiting class, and most of the guys who were playing were here and recruited for a different offense. And he's having guys that might not fit in the puzzle fit rather nicely. Exactly. He's found guys that can catch the football, but in his offense, precision route running is a must. Getting in and out of cuts because it's all timing and tempo. And he must be a great teacher because he's got athletes that are doing that pretty well. This is going nowhere but up because every quarterback, every receiver, every running back in the country is going to have this offense on their short list because it, it just is a, is a show every week of their talents. Yeah, it's a joy to play in. Yep. Three quarters done in Norman, Oklahoma. The Sooners continue to lead by three touchdowns. 24 to three. In the first quarter, six yards out. Norman, Oklahoma, the place. Such great tradition here. They've won five national championships over the years. Their last coming in 1985. They got a nice looking ball club this year. I think it's six, isn't it? Six, six excuse me. Yeah. Shorted them one. Six national championships, 34 conference titles. Second down. Complete for a short gain to Damian Mackey. That'll set up third down. 
Josh Heupel already over 300 yards passing in this game. You know, in conversation with Mike Stoops, the, the great defensive coordinator for Oklahoma, I said, you know, how do you stop this Oklahoma offense? He said, well, the first time we went up against the scrimmage, they threw for 600 yards. He said, it takes you out of everything you want to do. You have to change your whole defensive approach. So, boy, they put a lot of pressure on you. Oklahoma needs the four. Heupel, Hattles, touchdown. Chris Hammonds, the man who hobbled off earlier in the series, gets in the end zone. Tim Duncan, who's a pretty fair basketball player, tacks on the extra point. <laughs> 31 to 3. Heupel's liking uh, the action out here this afternoon. It's a quarterback's absolute dream running this offense. Two tight ends that have had a nice day. Chris Hammonds just got in the end zone. Matt Anderson earlier today got in the end zone. He's a little nicked up right now with a knee injury. Drew Goodman, Dave Lapham back upstairs. Oklahoma and Josh Heupel have been most impressive. Well, they really have. We talked about Heupel with the quick mind. You know, strong arm, that's important. But in this offense, a quick mind and decision making is the biggest thing. And he has got it all. And he really he knows when, where, and how to throw the football. He's got it figured out. He studies, studies, and studies some more, and he always seems to get an A on game day. He did at Snow Junior College, and so far in his first two weeks as a major college football player, he has. Perkins puts a knee down. Let's take a look at our Buick scoring drive. 11 plays, 89 yards. They have had three drives today in excess of 80 yards. Heupel to Hammonds from seven yards away and 35 yards in help from Baylor. Two pass interference penalties. You know, it, it doesn't matter what skill position you play on this football team. If you're a tight end, if you're a running back, if you're a wide receiver, you're going to get the football. Just ask Baylor's defense. They distribute the football to the skilled player that has the mismatch. It doesn't matter where on the field it occurs. Gain of about six yards. 89 is Andrew Obriati. Sophomore tight end from San Antonio. Now he's hobbling. This must be the t position today, Dave. Really? What is it? There's a, there's a football curse on the tight ends today. Second and five, Daryl Bush, two hands on the football. Runs into Rocky Kalmas, 20 and 10, Torrance Marshall. And we visit again with Jim Knox. Jim. Okay, thanks. Right now on the field, Trent Smith, the tight end, is returning. As we take a look at his left ankle, it is taped up, does not have the shoot on. Right now, the diagnosis, a sprained left ankle. I tell you what, the way he's walking, it looks like he wants to get back in, Drew. That would be good news. Let me correct some. I said Hammonds had hobbled off who scored the touchdown. It was Smith who hobbled off. If I'm a tight end, if I'm any skill player, I want back in this game. <laughs> wow. That is a turnover. It stayed up in the air, and Rocky Calvis picked it off. It deflected off Brandon Thompson. Brandon Thompson juggled it, and Calvis took it away. Third interception of the game for Oklahoma. Second thrown by Alfred. Cogdell, the wide receiver, threw one on a gadget play. Alfred had not thrown an interception all season long, but today he's thrown great. Take a look at it. He goes across the middle of the football field, throws it behind his tight end. Brandon Thompson can't make a play on it, but Calvis can. Got to put the ball in front, not behind the receiver. Heupel 
has it complete to Fagan. Pace knocks him out of bounds after an eight-yard gain. Fourth catch of the day for Curtis Fagan, a Richard freshman from Katy, Texas. How many receivers have caught a football today? Last week was 13, and five different guys caught touchdowns. I know at the half it was 10 different receivers. I don't know how many more you can get involved. I think you need to just start a contest at Oklahoma and, and register as a fan. You can get called out of the stands and make a couple of catches in this spread offense. Kind of like the 12th man at Texas sure, a absolutely. Be the receiver of the week. I don't know if uh, Coach Stoops will go for that, but it's a good idea. Oh. Eiffel has it away. And 81 is Chris Hammonds. He's been busy lately. His sixth catch of the day. Well, we talked at the half about pass protection. Let's take a look at the big fella right tackle, McDougal. Nice kick, kick, slide, kick, slide, 45 degree angle. Try to bull rush him, forget it. He's going to bench press you. Yeah. See you later. Try it on the next snap. He's got long arms. He's got good feet. He weighs 340. He's got anchor ability. He's, uh, I tell you, he must have been watching our little halftime tip with, uh, in the locker room because he executed very well. Good feet, and he jammed with those hands and bench pressed him away. It's like Dave Lapham used to do. <laughs> Eiffel throwing, and Jarrell Jackson couldn't haul it in. So it'll set up second down. You know, McDougal, you were watching uh, him on film yesterday. He says he's pretty nimble for 340. I'll tell you what, he's not a ballerina, but, you know, he's, he's got some pretty good uh, feet. He's got some pretty light feet, the big fella. I bet he dances pretty well. I bet he takes a lot of the dance floor up. I mean, he'd be a cul-de-sac out there on the dance floor. <laughs> you know, kind of a little neighborhood, but he's something else. I, I think he's got an opportunity to play on Sunday. He's a senior from Deerfield Beach, Florida, and now Hammonds is hurt. He hobbles off. This is the third tight end for Oklahoma to leave the field with some sort of leg injury. Swivels his hips to the nine-yard line. Well, he's going across the board today, Josh Heupel. Look at that. All areas, completions, attempts, yards. School record, school record, school record. And I think he's going to be breaking his own school records as the season progresses here because it's the early stages of Mike Leach's spread them out offense. It's got a little run and shoot. It's got a little West Coast. It's got a little salt, a little pepper. And there's the gourmet chef, Mike Leach. Third down and five. And now on fourth down as Antoine Savage started to run before he had it. We'll see the field goal unit, Tim Duncan. Go back to something that you mentioned earlier in the broadcast, something that Mike Leach talked to us about. Number one pick in the NFL draft this year. Yes. Tim Couch, he said, and Tim Couch has a stronger arm. Right. Tim Couch is a great player. He said, but if I had to choose who was more accurate, he said, Hypo was slightly more accurate than Tim Couch. Might be slightly more accurate, but the one thing that both guys had in common that he really loved, is he said a lot of times quarterbacks will study the film that you give them, but these guys always ask for more. They had a thirst for knowledge. And Hypo understands this offense very, very well. Josh Heupel and the Oklahoma Sooners have produced more than 500 yards in offense. Back-to-back -back games for just the first time since 1989. And it's not done with the wishbone. They're firing and falling back. 26-yard kick by Duncan is good. 34-3. The Sooners extend their lead. We're back in a moment. Rocky Kalmus and the Oklahoma Sooner defense has been outstanding as well today. We talked so much about the offense, but they've given up just three points. They've only had to see nine plays in the second half, Dave. It's incredible. Three and out, three and out, and three interceptions. That's, uh, that's going to be a very short reel or a very short tape for the coaching staff to critique in the second half. Tim Duncan getting ready to kick it off. How about seven plus quarters of football with allowed three points? That dog will hunt right there. I mean, that's keeping him off the scoreboard big time. 
Oklahoma, believe it or not, has not had a winning season since 1993. That is amazing. Yeah, yet they've had only five losing seasons since World War II, but three in a row. It's 12 wins in 96 through 98. Dawson from the goal line. Shy of the 20-yard line. Josh Heupel has been the man today. Offensive line giving him a good protection. He's run some receiver screens. But the thing about this offense, they flood zones and then attack all quadrants of the field. If the, if the middle of the field's exposed, he'll, he'll hit that. He'll check down to his backside of the backfield if necessary. In fact, his record-setting pass, he checks down nowhere to go, checks down to his fullback out of the backfield, and Latrell takes it for about 15 yards downfield, and that's a passing game record. Quarterback draw, Jermaine Alfred scoots out of bounds after about eight yards. And let's take a look. Our Dr. Pepper player of the game. I think it's safe to say that Josh Heifel is our Dr. Pepper player of the game, even though there's 11-15 left in the fourth quarter. Closing in on 400 yards of passing offense. The next Dr. Pepper I drink is going to be in honor of Josh Heifel. In fact, I may drink a six-pack in his honor. <laughs> I may bury a six-pack of pepper for Josh Heifel. It's a little too much sugar for you. Yeah, and I'll be buzzing. down and he's tackled by Torrance Marshall very close to the first down marker we talked to Bob Stoops yesterday about the potential of that man I think that's a little early to tell uh, so uh, I don't like to uh, make too much of someone until you know until they've done more on the field Josh has just started uh, although he's got a great start setting three records uh, just in his first time out uh, you know school records and, and throwing the football so I uh, really believe he can be uh, an excellent quarterback though and be comparable to many great ones Alfred great coverage again downfield and finally sacked by 94 Ryan Fisher well, Hypo now has performed very well two weeks in a row. Nice quarterback matchup next week when they go to Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah, exactly. Who will outthrow the other, Chris Redman or Josh Hypo? That's going to be a great matchup. Alfred has it away. And was a catch made by Newhouse? Yeah, they're going to give it to him. Reggie Newhouse, the true freshman from the... Dallas area went to Lake Highlands High School. The Oklahoma coaching, Brent Venables can't believe it. He says, what was that? You talk about intensity, check this out. Oh, man, a shed it. <laughs> I'd hate to see him upset. Oh, he's like, this is unbelievable. Easy. Brent's going to oh, blow a gasket. Man, Brent, I'd take his blood pressure. It's 100,000 over 900. <laughs> Jermaine Alfred, oh, boy. Almost tongue. Daryl Bush out to dry. Now Bush is going to have a little conversation and got with a flag. William Barty. And the, the head referee threw a flag. He's got holding on Baylor. Man, Brent Venable. Hey, you talk about a competitor. I hate to, a I'd hate to play racquetball against him. <laughs> Jeez. I don't, know if, I don't know if I want to play chess against I'm him. I'm telling you. He's still going. He played first down. Brent Venable, once again, there's no problem getting this young man focused. He is intense. You know, Brent Venables was a pretty good linebacker. Heck yeah. At Kansas State, and then joined the coaching staff after his career there. His metabolism, he must be able to eat about 20,000 calories a day with that metabolism. Alfred throwing, complete, got Brandon Thompson, the tight end. Good throw by Jermaine Alfred. It's been lost because of the score today, but Jermaine Alfred's really thrown the ball well when given time. He has, and, and you got a matchup here. you got the tight end Thompson on Rocky Calvis, and Rocky gets his back turned and never really can find the football quickly enough. Just enough separation. Get it over the linebacker and in front of the secondary, and that requires touch. And Alfred put it in there. 
Stafford, 13 of 20 today, with just 112 yards. Good throw again, and a nice catch by 86, Lanny Osteen, who's been in the end zone twice this year. Good patience by Alfred right here because all, look at him keep his eyes down the football field. The protection's good. They lose pass rush lane integrity a little bit. A huge gaping hole. Instead of running, he gets his, keeps his eyes down the field. He slide steps up in the pocket, but still eyes down the field the whole time. Lets his receiver work and delivers the football with, with accuracy. He gets it to Lagway in the flat. And the big man rumbles for about 11. Torrance Marshall brought him down. Boy, when Lagway gets going, gets those, that pad level down, whoo, that's a headache to bring that big fella down. And, you know, he can move laterally a little bit also. You saw it there. You know, he's got a fullback body, but a tailback, a tailback mentality. I mean, he wants the football in his hands. In the flat, and the knee went down for Randy Davis. You see that score a moment ago, Nebraska losing to Southern Miss 13-12. Wow, what a monumental upset that will be. Southern Miss, though, every season, when yep. they play the big boys, they always show up. They used to knock off Auburn every once in a while. They've got good athletes, and, and they've uh, got a coaching staff that's been together for a while down there, continuity. Fade to Fuller. Great adjustment and a touchdown. What an adjustment by Andre Fuller. They finally hook up with number one. That's the first touchdown allowed by the Oklahoma defensive unit this season. And really, the two guys made a great play. Alfred put the ball to the outside where only his receiver could make a play on it. And as you described, Drew, the receiver makes a great adjustment to the football. When the ball's in the air, adjust your body accordingly. Alfred gets him on the board, and they will go for two. No reason not to. No. You need, you need, whenever you can get that extra point, do it now. There's only nine minutes to go in this game. And Baylor a little confused. They had a big fella trying to work his way out of the field, and Jermaine Alfred has to call timeout. 9-13 to play, 34-9 OU. OU. Football has been brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. By the all-new 2000 Buick LeSabre by Buick. Re-engineered to be safer than ever. And by Southwestern Bell Wireless. Southwestern Bell, friendly neighborhood global. An aerial view of the campus of the University of Oklahoma. Just outside of Oklahoma City, Jermaine Alfred and the Baylor Bears have had a long day after a long two weeks. They lost in overtime to Boston College, and then on the last snap of the game, when the fumble was returned by Kevin Thomas of UNLV, as Dave Lapham said at the top of the broadcast, snatching, snatching defeat, defeat from the jaws, jaws of victory. victory. Yes. Oklahoma was looking for the onside kick. Baylor kicked it through the end zone. Let's take a look at this uh, this touchdown that Baylor executes. Good protection. Throws the football outside. The only guy who can make a play on it is Fuller, and he adjusts. There's a complete 360 to the football. Nice effort, nice concentration. Look at him look the football into his hands. Nicely done. Again, I think Jermaine Alfred's played pretty well today. And there's no quit in him. That's what you got to like. I mean, the coaches say that uh, it's tough to rattle the kid. He's very, very cool, calm, and collected. Hypo remains the quarterback, first and 10 from the 20. Hypo, I mean, all day. He looked at about five receivers, finally threw it short underneath to Antoine Savage. Here's the Buick scoring drive for Baylor. 
Nine plays, 83 yards, and Alfred near perfect on the drive, seven of eight. If you're wondering why Heifel's still in there, I think a lot of it has to do with the, the offense being so new. They want to get him as many reps as possible. I, I agree with that 100%. You know, this, they're still in the infancy stages here. I mean, that's what's scary. Mike Leach uh, has more he can do here, I think. On his 51st attempt of the day, Julius McMillan picks one off. That's an and additional receiver. Yep, that's number 12. <laughs> yes. 13 last week. See if they can supersede that this week. Amazing. Hypo looks like his left arm is about an inch shorter, an inch longer than his right right now. <laughs> I mean, by the time the season's over, he'll be able to tie his left shoelace without bending over. You know, he's like a pitcher. They better ice his arm after Man, every game. I'm telling you. Actually, Bob Stoops was saying yesterday that we don't want to throw him too much during the week for that very reason. Here's a shuttle to Latrell. That goes nowhere, and a flag comes in. Edrick Brooks. Blew him a kiss quickly. You know, the question, holding on Oklahoma, the question, you start to wonder, Florida's system, Danny Werfel, Heisman Trophy winner, what's he done in the NFL? What Florida quarterback has really lit it up in the National Football League? Tim Couch. Handling offense, 10 yards, repeat first down. Tim Couch, beneficiary of this system, the same type of system. Uh, hopefully, Tim Couch, with the number one pick in the draft, will pan out a lot more than any Florida quarterbacks have. Couch will do better than that for the Cleveland Browns. This system is is something that quarterbacks will arm wrestle over the opportunity to execute because it just makes them look so good. I mean, last week, Tim Couch's replacement for Kentucky has thrown up big numbers two consecutive weeks. I mean, the system works, and, and really, what you have to have is a good mind, and he's got one. That pass is incomplete. Knocked away. It'll bring up second down and 20. Let's take a look at our national car rental game summary. Heupel, three more school records. He's been on campus uh, <laughs> at least as a student, well, since January, but uh, two football games and about six school records. OU defense has played very, very well. Total offense. Are you man. kidding me? Five and a quarter football fields and counting. Over 1,000 yards in two weeks. Heupel so far in the season has thrown for over 750 yards and clicked on 74% of his passes. That's going to be incomplete as well as Damon Mackey tried to pick it up on the short hop. You know, the other thing about this offense, this spread offense that Mike Leach runs, he's always had a running back rush for 1,000 yards because he spreads you out, spreads you out, spreads you out. You take, you know, you don't you don't match up in the box. You match up even Steven, not one more in the box than you can block, and they'll run it. They'll run it at you. So, I mean, he's got a kid here that's going to generate some yards for him in Michael Thornton. So I, I, they'll probably get a 1,000-yard rush out of this bad boy as well. Third down, and a couple of good-sized neighborhoods. That is complete. Baxter grabs him immediately, and Chris, Chris Mishaw, as Damon Mackey was able to hang on that time. It'll be fourth down. Oklahoma will punt. Here's a partial look at the staff that Bob Stoops has put together. One one of the coaches there, the two coaches over 40 years old, Mark Mangino is, is one of them. And everybody else, very young, but you'll see some head coaches eventually out of this group of guys. I mean, Bob's brother, Mike, already being talked about as a potential head coach. And five, ten years down the road, this coaching tree will expand big roots. The punt by Ferguson. It's a monster punt. Man. Ooh, he almost caught the corner. He, al <laughs> he almost did. He almost hit the pylon. Yeah. They'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. There's Mr. Intensity, Max Venables. Brent Venables, I called him Max, forgive me. And yesterday, one of the things Bob Stoops talked about was his coaching staff. I feel very fortunate to, to have the, the coaches that are here working with us. I think they're, they all, as you look at them individually and their, and their accomplishments in their life and in their coaching careers and in their playing careers, all of them come from success, all of them from winning programs and com competed for championships and have been involved in championships. And, and uh, so they have a great, great winning background as well as great character, great character people that, uh, that young people enjoy being around, very positive. They complete the direct 
extension of Lagway. A moment ago, you saw Mark Mangino, who is the run game coordinator yes, yes. for Oklahoma. And he was the uh, lead recruiter, the recruiting coordinator at Kansas State, and he will do that responsibilities here at Oklahoma as well. He said that they did not sign one offensive lineman. He coaches the O-line, did not sign one offensive lineman in this recruiting class. He's going to have to sign about six or seven in next season's recruiting class to protect the quarterback. There's your big kid watching. Get your tape to Oklahoma. Here's Alfred on a scramble. And he'll get to the 25-yard line. Kalmus brought him down along with 92, Corey Callens. Well, I thought I saw a hold in there big time that went undetected. I thought Whitson, Tyshawn Whitson, reached out and grabbed and held, but no flag. Play on. Third and five. Alfred dropped, loss of four, another sack. Third of the ball game for the Sooners. Wilson Guest, the 300-pound junior from Jones, Oklahoma, picks it up. Going back to the coaching staff, this could be one of those staffs, Dave, in five, six, seven years. We look back and we see three or four head coaches sure. around college football that were on this staff. Sure, it's going to be a deal like Paul Brown in the NFL. Unbelievable coaching tree that goes back to Paul Brown. Bill Walsh is part of Paul Brown's coaching tree. His tree has expanded in the National Football League. It just kind of grows and grows. J.T. Thatcher's back deep from the 32. Thatcher oh. Oh. gets away. Uh-oh. Just Atterbury to beat. And Atterbury trips him up. J.T. Thatcher's first return of the ball game, and he nearly busted it. You know, the thing about Oklahoma, Bob Stoops and his staff, everybody on this team has increased their speed and their strength and their endurance, so they play much tougher in the fourth quarter. Here they've got some gas in their tank still. Thatcher, Baylor may be a little bit fatigued. They've got eight starters on special teams. Thatcher gets an opportunity here and takes full advantage of it. Everybody's bigger, stronger, faster. The strength uh, and conditioning coaches here at Oklahoma have done a fantastic job. There's another guy, JT Thatcher, that was a quarterback two years ago. And speaking of quarterbacks, Patrick Fletcher now in the ballgame. And he hands off straight ahead. 24 is Reggie Skinner. Let me correct that. It's 18, not 16. It's Jason White. Jason White in the ball game. Freshman from Tuttle, Oklahoma. Well thought of. Freshman, 6'2 and 212 pounds. And he's probably just licking his chops for an opportunity to run this package. First and goal inside the three. Skinner driving. Wow. Touchdown. That was all Reggie Skinner. Tremendous leg drive. Tremendous lower body strength right there. Skinner, senior from Claremore, Oklahoma. Great things are going for Oklahoma. He'll get plenty of opportunities this year. Duncan pounds it through. And the Sooners lead 41 to 10. Reggie Skinner, kid who made, played eight-man high school football and led the nation in rushing his senior year in high school, gets in the end zone in his senior year in college. 41 to 10, the Sooners leading Baylor. A Buick scoring drive, 15 yards after the JT Thatcher long punt return of 52 yards. Boy, it's nice when your kicking game gives you that short field. Isn't it? You bet. On through the end zone. Baylor again will have it at the 20-yard line. Let's take a look at our efollet.com lineman profile. Dave, Jay Smith, <laughs> he's been around a while. He should write a book. He's been here with four different coaches. He could probably uh, 
Boy, I tell you a lot of little uh, little stories here at Oklahoma. He's granted that sixth year of eligibility. That's a rarity in itself. Jay Smith weathered the storm, and uh, hopefully he'll, he'll pay dividends for him here in that sixth season. Starting left guard. Alfred in trouble. Gets it away. And at 59 with the footballs, Ethan Kelly. He's a 300-pound left guard. And he's, and he's ineligible. He's ineligible. <laughs> but you know what? Ethan said, we're getting beat by 31. It's in my direction. I'm going to grab it. He said, I'm going to show you my skills with a Z. I'll tell you. I'm looking Just around. <laughs> I'm going, there's no 59ers at tight end. <laughs> Unrealism. <laughs> Alfred was laughing, too. He, he got a kick out of it, but now he's Ben Gazzari. He's running for his life, so he just dumps the ball off. And, and really, Bush was there. <laughs> Bush was there, and the ball goes past him. And, uh, and the lineman says, hey, you don't want it? I'll take it. Right now, Jermaine's in the huddle explaining. See, uh, Ethan, you're a blocker. When that ball's coming by, let the little fella catch it. Yeah. Unbelievable. But he turned it upfield nicely, I, didn't he? I think at one time he might have been a fullback. I don't know. In another life. <laughs> There's Big Ethan, Richard freshman from Sugar Land, Texas. I put him in goal line as my tight end. You bet. Why not? <laughs> Alfred has it complete to Brandon Thompson, who is a tight end. Well, what did Baylor want to do? They wanted to win on first down. They're not. Oklahoma's over seven yards of play on first down. Baylor's less than three yards of play on first down. That did, or just about three yards of play on first down. That didn't work out. Right to the line of scrimmage. Get it in the flat to Perkins, and he dropped the football. And then uh, the next key was uh, minimize yak yards after catch. 212 yards after catch for OU. That didn't happen either, so we get minus, minus, 75% scoring ratio touchdowns in the red zone. They're only there two times, and they only scored once. That's a minus. Three minuses. That's why you're down by 31 points. Yeah, Jermaine Alfred's been sacked three times, harassed today, and when he's had time, though he has a high completion percentage, not a lot of yak for uh, Baylor as he's dropped for the fourth time. Yak being yards after catch. Right, exactly. Ramon Richardson, 91. We can call it yard, too. Yards after reception. Yak, yard. We'll yeah, yeah. start well, our own stuff. Our own yard's yard. probably a better term <laughs> than yak. <laughs> really. Three twenty-five, clock moving. Dangerous stature is back again. Kyle Atterbury to punt. And this one's returnable also. Yes, sir. Thatcher from the 40. He almost squeezed out of that 42-yard punt. And a five-yard return. For the Sooners, let's check their report card. Well, ball security, they gave it up a few times, but their defense got it back, so they're plus one. So they're okay there. Make uh, Baylor offense predictable on first down. Yeah, they did that. Seven and a half yards every third down opportunity. No silly mistakes. They did have some penalty problems. I'd, I'd say that's an even Steven check. But they're plus two of their three keys. That's why they're up. 31 points. Jason White remains the quarterback. And he has it complete. 82 is Michael Jackson. Not that Michael Jackson. Really? I don't, does he, he's got two gloves on? Yeah, he's not that Michael Jackson. He's wearing two gloves. <laughs> if he takes one off, I might be a little confused. Pick up of nine on the play. of play by Gary Baxter. And, and, and there's no quit in Gary Baxter. This is bump and run. He doesn't really contact and coming off the line of scrimmage, but he is in his hip pocket. Turns and finds the football. You can't play much better position 
and Gary Basham did right there and got his hand on the football. That's nice D. And Dave, you played in the NFL for 10 years. The trend now is for bigger cornerbacks, and right. he is a big corner. He is a big corner that can run. And he may be a Mel Blunt type. He may be around a real long time. Third and one. Skinner. And Skinner's going to lose yardage. 16 coming up is Samir Alameen. Free safety. Look at Oklahoma's schedule. This is a tough stretch beginning with. Look at the two non conference deals. Yeah. He goes against Redmond next week, then go to Notre Dame. That's never rosy. And then look at the next two conference opponents back to back Texas and Texas AM. A lot of people think one and two in the division. That's a tough schedule right there. Challenge awaits Oklahoma. It's good to get off to a good start, but you're never as good as you think you are, and you're never as bad as you think you are. You have to be humble and keep working. Seven straight games against teams that played the ball. Winter. Fuller fields it at his five. And in the halo. Yep. Ante Jones made the tackle, but he might have gotten inside the two yard zone, the two yard halo that Dave referenced. And we're not talking angels. They're not angels down there in the field, but you have to give them two yards of cushion to be able to field the punt. Give him two yards. Dud, ooh, it's pretty, pretty nice in, in the in the National Football League. That would be one heck of a play. But in college football, you have to give him two yard separation. Ante Jones back off an ankle injury, and he's looked pretty good today. He is an athlete. You know, they're, they're, that's the thing. Oklahoma, the cupboard wasn't bare in terms of guys that can run. They got some, they got some jets. Huh? Their team speed isn't what they're used to at uh, Kansas State defensively, but it's not bad. Odell James in the game for the first time. Oh, he's going to get lit up. Oh, that missed him. Somebody came clean off the edge and fanned on Odell James. Yes, he did. I think it was Roy Williams. It might have been Roy Williams, 38, that came on the, off the slot. And he bounced off Odell James like he was a barber pole. Odell goes about 230 pounds. <laughs> made by Davis and then he retreats. Yeah, that's a negative affair. Well, Kevin Steele knew that he'd have to get his team focused after the devastating loss last week against UNLV. He said, we actually had a great week. Now he has to get him up again after getting beat up pretty good here in Norman. Yeah, in this game, his exes weren't as good as their O's and vice versa. That's what it boiled down to. Odell James keeps it for a few. That'll bring up fourth down. The executive producers of college football are Arthur Smith and Bill Borson. The coordinating producer for college football Saturday is Roy Hamilton. Today's game produced by Bob Steinfeld and directed by Kenny Miller. Our vice president of field operations, Andrea Jenkins. And as always, we thank the sports information offices at the respective schools, Oklahoma and Baylor. Mike Krasinski at Oklahoma and his staff. And Maxi Parrish at Baylor and his outstanding staff. That'll do it. The Oklahoma Sooners are 2-0. The Baylor Bears slip to 0-3. And for the first time since 1994, Oklahoma has won their league opener in impressive fashion, 41-10 over the Bears. And it's time to take a look at our BMW play of the game. And it's appropriate that it's a hypo accurate toss. And here it is to Anderson. This ball is perfectly thrown. Decent coverage. Anderson uses his body as a shield a little bit, a little screen action. Came up injured, but just an unbelievable toss. Couldn't throw it any better if he walked up and dropped it on top of him. Eiple was terrific. Over a thousand yards in total offense for the Sooners through two weeks of play. And Oklahoma team to be reckoned with. They certainly are. On both sides of the football, they've got systems that work. And they are going to be a force to be reckoned with. There's no question.
Sooners may be back. Plan to join us next Saturday morning at 11.30 for our next Big 12 telecast. It'll be the nationally ranked Kansas State Wildcats visiting Ames, Iowa to take on the Iowa State Cyclones. Now for Dave Lapham and Jim Knox and our entire crew, I'm Drew Goodman saying so long from Norman, Oklahoma and Owen Field. The Sooners have the schooner running 41-10. to 10. They beat the Baylor Bears. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll talk to you next Saturday morning.